Oh!
the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning, praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. It was the blood. Thank you, Jesus. It was the blood. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad you are here today. And I know God is going to bless us. Let's go ahead and give our tithe and offerings in Jesus' name. Then we're going to go and learn on the power of the communion. Even those of you watching by television, come and be with us today. It's important because you're going to learn a lot in Jesus' mighty name. And uh, while we are giving, you can use your mobile money, MTN cord, Airtel cord, FlexPay, and, um, and any other systems we use, PayPal. Plant your seed today in Jesus' name. He who looks at the clouds will never sow and he will, see, he will never even harvest if you look at the wind and uh, I was in Paida yesterday yeah, I took flight and uh, the wind the wind was so heavy the wind was so strong that we had to get lower on the height usually you will fly on but also um, and also go slow because we are facing a heavy wind. Alone, uh, if it's behind you, then it's good. It, it pushes you, but if it's ahead of you, you are working against it. We had a wonderful meeting in, in Paida. It, it was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, nearly the whole, the whole place turned up the, the, the crowds were incredible. It was, it was amazing. The need in district to, re, to, to reignite. Actually, we were, we were dedicating a Miracle Center church there. Um, and uh, amazingly, you, you may not understand, this pastor came to us 40 years ago, this lady pastor. She said, God, to, uh, God has called me to be a pastor 40 years ago. Today, she is the mother of incredible sons and daughters. Her youngest she has eight children. Her youngest is the pastor of Miracle Center. In uh, Payuda, the home is not Payuda, it's called Payuda. And uh, then her second born is the bishop of Yumbe, I mean, of, of, uh, no, no, of Zombe, in the Anglican Church. And he was there in the meeting. That was, to me, that was amazing. And then, um, her son is the deputy ambassador of Uganda in Canada. The other son works in State House. Another one is a uh, is a town clerk of another city. Town clerk which I said, what kind of this? Sometimes we don't understand. You know, prayer and Jesus and anointing will, will create your children to be greater than you have yes. ever known. So we we were. We were there dedicating the church. The, they donated the land. 
And uh, they build a wonderful church. And uh, it's really glorifying God. We were touched by the power of God, by the anointing, the miracles, uh, blind eyes open, cripples walking. And on Thursday, we were in um, Chiboga, in a place called Kapeche. There is also a miracle center church there. We were, we were, we were dedicating it and uh, meeting the people there. God is doing something wonderful. God is doing something wonderful. Um, we, 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 we have to believe God for greater and mighty things. Please go ahead and give. Um, your tithe and offerings if you have already given God which is a blessing in Jesus name um, because of time I'm going to share with you about Holy Communion if someone can get me the bread here and uh, and uh, the the fruit of the of vine in a, in a glass or a jar or something. Real bread. Non slices. Real bread and a jar. Or a glass. Brothers and sisters, with the way things are happening around the world, diseases uh, which are coming from nowhere or from man's mistakes because our suffering is always man engineered when God created the heaven and earth he put man in charge and these are the words he said with man when he gave him the garden in Genesis. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. This is man's mandate. This is why he created man. So that God will bless him. Brothers and sisters, that's why when he was beginning with a second Adam, he began with Abraham. And he communicated to him in chapter 12 that I will bless you. Do you want to find out a real God? Do you find, want to find a God to worship? He is a God who blesses. Before verse 1, Genesis 12 verse 1, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I'll show thee. And he said, And I'll bless thee. I will bless thee. The God we serve is a God who is going to bless you. You, you, that's how he communicates. That's how he communicates. He talks to us by blessing us. Now, we have never figured out what is God's blessing. When God talks blessing, it's different from when I say blessing. Let's get a glimpse on, on God's blessing. Deuteronomy 28. At least you get a glimpse. Now, why Abraham and others never understood it is simply because they were not yet delivered. You will never understand God's blessing until you are delivered from bondage. Now, how you are delivered is, we also don't understand that, but 
Moses understood it. And he wrote about it in the book of Deuteronomy. Now, the book of Deuteronomy, look at the first four letters. It is D-E-U-T. It's duet. It's duet. Duet is two voices singing. We always have a duet. We have a quartet. So the, 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 there is, this one is duet. Two voices. You are talking. He is talking. So blessings begin when you talk and he talks. You understand? You are talking. His, where is my bread and where is the... So, you are talking, he's talking. 28. Just, just help that, that lady go outside and get a breakfast. Ashes, catchers, just... And all these blessings... Let's read together. One, two, three, go. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So when God talks about blessings, He said they will come on you and overtake you. So... When something comes on you, it's now controlling you. The word to come on you it means to control you. Yes, I want this, but I want the bread and I want the thing I've asked for. See, he, he said, uh, it will come on you. When something comes on you, it has come to empower you, but also to control you. It's like when a demon comes on somebody, when an anger comes on somebody, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon you, you shall receive power. It has come to control you, to give you power, but also to give you direction. Okay? And this blessing shall come on thee and overtake thee. So in other words, when it comes on you, now you have it, now it's empowering you, then what is going to happen? It's going to overtake you. In other words, you're not going to go in the direction of poverty again, or lack again, or curses again. You see? Once something overtakes you, now it is leading you. So, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. In Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. So, when God talks about, I'll bless thee, that's what he's talking about. That, 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 this can give you a glimpse of when God says, I'm going to bless thee. Okay. Verse 3. The blessing of the Lord. No, verse 3. Come on. Okay. Okay. Blessing shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the, in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest. Now, people of God, I want you to go closely and mark these things. Let's go back to verse 1. So that we put some meat on this sepulcher. 
and it shall bless and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe and do all that commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth he will set you above all the nations of the earth Remember, he talks to Abraham when he's alone with his wife and he said, I'll make you of a nation. So when God talks about a nation, he's not talking about the whole country of Uganda. He's talking about your family. If Uganda does not want to be blessed, your family will be blessed. I asked this guy to bring me a loaf of bread. He's bringing me slices. I, I don't know. I don't, know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with, 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 with ears of people. Now, it, it does not matter. Saints, I want you to understand this. It's not indicative of where Uganda government goes. They may decide to, which to, to, to by their constitution, to declare that the that witchcraft is the god of Uganda. It has never happened before. Babylon raised an image in the valley. That did not stop Daniel to be blessed. So I, I, I want you to get away from this um, idea if we all don't do it, if we all you, you not united, we will not achieve the success. God is talking to you as a country. There is a nation in you, 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 you. you. The whole family of you has been decided to be witches. Then what will you do? What will you do? Someone can make stupid mistakes and the economy, economy of the country go south. But according to the word of God here, God said, I'll make you above all nations. And say, now all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Then he goes and says, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and thou shalt be in the field. Now, I want you to understand. I don't know where a man got the word village. God talks about fields. He's not talking about villages. Right down from the very beginning, when Cain sinned, when he came from the presence of God, he went and built a city. And at that time, there was no plan for a city. We, you, we build our cities based on other cities. We build on cities based on other cities. Cain, a sinner, met God and he built a city. God is the God of cities. You're going to build a city. Change your mindset. Change your perception. The God we deal with is not a God of villages. Okay, you may say, well, there's a scripture that said he went to the villages and surrounding villages where he was preaching. But see where God, his son, was born. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David. That's where Jesus was born. From city to city. Okay, you leave the city, go to the villages if that's your idea. No, you are going back where you were born to turn that village into a city.
to turn that, that place into a city. So the God we deal with is a God of blessings. Lift your hand and say, my God is a God of blessings. That's why he comes that he may have life and have it more abundantly. So the, the problems we are going through, diseases, sickness, is man's contribution, is man's mistakes. Okay, I don't have much more time, but let me just go quickly here. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be in the field, in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. So you could see the picture God has about you. Self-reliant. Not depending on anybody. Not depending on government or bosses or anybody. Once you have that, you have your own country. You have your own nation. I mean, you're going to build a palace. A palace is not the size of a house. A palace is what supports the building. You see. Verse 5. Blessed are thy basket and thy store. Why is he saying basket and store? That whatever you have grown in the field, you are capable of storing post harvest. I said post harvest. One of the problems in Africa, we produce, but we don't know how to protect what we produce. Or even harvest it properly. In actually, in Africa, we have a doctrine of dust. We believe in the dust than in development. We pick coffee, we put it in the dust. Maize dust. Babies God has given us, we put them in the dust. Because God said, to the dust you shall return. But yet the things Amen. that you can build of Utandaro, you really don't need anything from Europe. All you need is poles. And reeds. And a mat. And you dry your coffee. So when God talks about blessings, what is he really talking about? He talks about baskets. Because that's when he started with Moses. Moses was put in a basket. And he was saved. Fast forward. The apostles are beaten. They want to kill Paul. Not only that, but even the, even the, uh, the spies. They were saved in the basket. God is the God of baskets. And the basket is not these ones here. Bring that basket here. This is not a basket. This is a kabasket. Because I can't sit in this basket. According to God, a basket is where you can put a human being and hide him. Today it's a bell. So you, that's why when, when Elijah was sent to a widow 
What did Elijah say? He said, your bear will not run out of wheat. People were having bear in their houses where they store wheat. None this basket is every gully. So I want you to get a picture of the people who are dealing with God. What were they having in their houses? This is the God we are serving. God talks about bells. And baskets big enough to hide someone. May God give you a store or a bell according to your height. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. No. May God give you where you store your money according to your height and size. Amen. Okay, sit down. Now, now, so he goes. Let, let's read this one so that we may understand. I hope God gives me enough time to really share this. Blessed that that be that basket and thy store. Store. My God. Amen. Blessed shall thou be thy basket and thy store. Go ahead, please. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall be thou when you go out. It is when you are going out, you are blessed. When you are coming back, you are blessed. No curse in between. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. In other words, God said, your enemies must be there. All of us won't go to eliminate our enemies. But he said, no, 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 let your enemies be there. Because God wants to kill them while you are watching. He wants them to sit to watch you while you are eating your breakfast. He prepares a table before your enemies. So stop praying your enemy to go away. Pray more to come. Because the more they come, the more heavenly activity is going on in your life. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that sitteth thine hand upon, and shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Blessing everywhere, even where you are going. So that gives you a glimpse of when God said, I'll bless thee, what it means. Now, watch these children of Israel. But to, so today, when the nations are going through what they are going through, when we are going through what we are going through, we realize we have made serious mistakes. And one of the greatest mistakes we have done, we have ignored God's word. We are running our lives based on man's thinking. We are running our lives based on man's word. So what do you do? now markets are a yo-yo now but they are not going up they are going down whatever you invest now does not make sense anymore the prices are up the profit is going to be so minimal and yet you are consuming much so what are you going to do because we are not listening to God God said to the children of Israel the wealth of the wicked is laid down for the righteous. Remember, God is not driven or controlled by time or space. Remember, he talked about store. 
and he said I'll bless your store. store yo, so I got my maize Kati because he said grow maize. Here Miracle Center, we cannot say God never told us. For he did. Not once. Not twice. Many times. He did. Did we do it? No. Did we build the house, the stores? No, we didn't. We build our little houses. And we spend millions. And God said, I wish they could understand. I wish they could listen to my word. That's why he said, believe God, you'll be established. Believe the prophets, you will prosper. A kilo of maize now is 2,000. It used to be 400. It reached 1,000. Now it's at 2,000. And the way the weather has been, I was flying all over and I've seen no active growth of maize. So my point is, someone I've had, someone grew and stored and bought, actually borrowed money from a bank. The bank is the one who told me. This person went at the uh, no, October last year. He built stores. Actually, he rented the store, but he went and bought maize. And he stored it. 5,000 tons. He said he bought it at 900. 900. How much money is he going to make? And this person is not a believer. Is not a believer. So he had gone to the bank. So that they will be able to transfer his money into dollars. But you say sent it as one you say, but you because the company in Kenya has bought all his maize. Now you're looking at me and you're saying, Why are you telling us now, Pastor? I'm just telling you because the word first came to you. One season of failed rain season has made him a billionaire. And now he's going to become a money lender. The promises of God said, you shall lend nations and never born. Can I have my board? You know, there are times we preach messages not just to Make you feel good. But sometimes we need to preach a message that drives poverty out of you. Or drive hell out of you. My dad used to say this. He said, This will cast the hell out of you. 5,000 tons. Those are five million kilos. The profit is making is one thousand one hundred. So that is five. That is fifty-five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the money he has made in profit. Five billion. Five billion. Point five. That is one million dollars. One point five. In dollars. With a shillings. All he did. Was to buy. And keep. And wait. You know the scripture that said wait upon the Lord. We think you sit there and say. Close and you close What are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting upon him. We think that's what it means. Now this man is going to fly like eagles. He borrowed little money from the bank. Now if he's to buy a building, he'll buy more. So the problems we suffer a man engineered. We make mistakes. We don't obey God. We, do, we hear, but we do not respond. Our corresponding actions are completely off. So we can't see what he said for us. Now, there are diseases and there are going to be more diseases. Monkeypox, COVID, Ebola. There are going to be more that you have never even heard. The problem is we are looking at the pharmaceuticals. We are not looking at the healer. I am the Lord God that heals thee. All our focus, we are looking at the pharmaceuticals. And we are, it's not, it's not wrong. We need medicine. We need medicine. Because God said, I'm the balm of Gilead. There was a balm of Gilead. The, the balm is oil mixed with uh, like chapa ambalas. Uh, like chapa ambalas. So the balm comes from oil with, with medicine. But we're not looking at that. We're looking at the God who can protect when people believe on him. Because the miracle of COVID in Uganda, we can't say it was vaccination. We can't say because there was medicine. No. God simply had mercy upon us. Because we trusted him. We cried out to him when COVID had just come. Before we even had a single person tested. We cry to God. We've been in 77. We pray to God. We say, God, protect us. And he did. Saints, okay. So this is what he did. When Adam sinned, Adam, you know, Hello, praise King Jesus. Good morning. We want to welcome you so much to the kids' service today. It's such a beautiful day, and we are very glad that we entered the new month of July. Today is 3rd July, and we want to welcome you to the new month as well. It's such a privilege, and we thank God that he has enabled us and has given us the grace to enter this new month. But we, before we go any further and before we introduce the new topic for this month, I'd like all of us to humble ourselves, children, let's humble ourselves, and we pray.
Father, I want to thank you so much for this day because this is the day that you have made that we may rejoice and be glad in it because your mercies are new each and every morning. That's why we come and ask you for the for the grace to go through this day that everything may work according to your glory, that everything that will be shared today will be learned by each and every person out there that is listening in. For all the glory and honor belongs to your name. Amen. So um, today we're going to be talking about the parables of Jesus. And uh, before we go, before we start talking about that, before I give the children an opportunity, I want to say thank you to each and everybody, the team that went to Green Hill yesterday, Green Hill Academy, for the praise rally. We, are, we appreciate that a lot, everyone that worked behind the scenes, th people that you could not see on that stage, but we want to thank God for the students of Green Hill Academy. Thank you so much for being supportive. Thank you for loving Proclaim Music. Thank you for loving Robert Kenja Ministries because nothing could have happened if, if, if it weren't for you. So I want to thank you for the administration of Green Hill. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to share the gospel with the children. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have Mute for it for us the story, the parable that they're going to be talking about. Yes, Mutefu. Um, Good morning, everybody. Um, so our topic for today is the parable of the lost son. Um, that is in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. Um, it says, uh, Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens in, of that country who sent him out on, to, to his farm to take care of the pigs. He, he wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last, he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat. And here am I, here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way f from home when his father saw him. His, his heart was filled with pity, and he ran through his arms around his son kiss and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servant, Hurry, he said, Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his, and, and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prize calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with a feast, for his son, for this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the elder son was out in the field on his way back. When he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered. And your father has killed the prize calf because he got him back safe and sound. 
Then the, el the elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So his father came out and begged him to come in. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have worked for you like a slave, and I have never disobeyed your orders. What have you given what have you given me? Not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But this but this son of yours wasted all his property on prostitutes and when he came back when he comes back home you kill the prize calf for him my son the uh, the father answered you are always here with me and, and and everything i have is yours but we had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead but now is alive he was lost but now he has been found thank you and thank you so much, Mute, for the He was talking about the story of the prodigal son, and he read it. So I'm going to ask Alpha to tell us what he gets from this story. It's a very famous story, but everyone has their own peace of mind about it. So I'm going to ask Alpha to tell us about it. Hello, everyone. My name is Alpha Muxasurada. Welcome to the kids' service. Today I'm going to talk about the prodigal son. Let me first tell you the story in brief. Once upon a time, there was, there was a man, a certain man. He had two sons, the younger son and the older son. The younger son one day asked him to give, to give him some of his money, riches, hmm? so that the younger son could go to another country and live his own life. So when the younger son went to, his ca to, to the country where he wanted to go. He spent all his money there and became poor. And later, there came a sudden famine, and he was he was he was poor. He didn't have anything to eat or drink. Okay, yes, he was looking for jobs, and when he found a job of taking care of pigs, he desired to eat the the, the food that the pigs were eating. Can you imagine a, pa a a son of a rich man eating pigs' food? And then he turned to himself and said, my, my, my father's servants and my brother have all the riches. Why did I go away from my home? And then he went back to his father and repented. And the father celebrated hmm, for him. And when his older brother came back, he heard music and called one of the servants. He called one of the servants. and. He said, what's going on? The servant, the servant said, your son, your, your, your brother has come back. And because of that, your father is, is doing a surprise party for him. And then the older brother got envious, like he got jealous. And when the father came outside, he said, Father, I've been serving you for all my years. I've been working for you as a slave. I've been doing this and that for you. I've never disobeyed your command. And you haven't done something like this for me. You are only doing it to your younger, to your younger son, who spent all your money that you gave him. Hmm? And then the father explained to him and said, Brother, my son, your, 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 your brother has been lost, now he's found. He has been dead, now he's alive. And then the brother realized, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. So that's what he did, and he also celebrated. That's the end. Um, I'm, going to read, I'm going to give you three verses. The first verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him will not die but have an entire life. So Amen. the love, the love, the father of the prodigal son had love for his son. That's why every, every morning he could stand on the road and wait f and check on the road, is my son coming, is he coming? That's what he would do. Hmm? And then one day, the son came. Okay? Yes. So, um, I have a question. What does the father of the prodigal son represent? 
Can I answer? Hmm? Can I answer? Hmm. God. Hmm. Correct. Hmm. Praise God, Church. My name is Trinity. Well, I think I think I think the father of the prodigal son represents God. Yeah, he, in that he way. He represents God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Son represents us, the servants of God, mm. as human beings. So, yeah, that's what the Father represents, and that's what the Son represents. So, the prodigal son, this, this, this scripture says that, for God so loved the world. So God loves us in other cases. We are his sons. We are his sons. Okay? And God loves us very much. That's why he's always in the road waiting to forgive us. Okay? Yes. So kids out there, if you think God God's not waiting to forgive you, God will forgive you. Okay? The next verse I'm going to read is from Proverbs 14, verse 12. It says... There is a way to man that seems right, but the result of it is death. So when you sin, the result is death. The 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 son of the pro, of the, the father of the prodigal son, he he loved him. He loved his son so much. Amen. But the prodigal son was about to die because he had taken he because he took a wrong path. He thought Amen. it was the right path, but it was the wrong path. Hmm? So there, there, are there are places where we go and we think we are doing the right things, but we may not be doing the right things. So what the prodigal son would have did is stay home and, be, and keep there. Okay? Yes, so, so we should never sin. Because the result of sin is death. I'm not talking about the death where someone shoots you and you die. No. I'm talking about the spiritual death. The death where your spirit dies. When you sin, your spirit dies. But also, that's the spiritual death. But the physical death is when someone shoots you, the, the, the skin dies. But your spirit stays alive. Okay? Yeah. And the third verse I want to read is from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. God has good plans for us. Amen. Not to forsake us, but to give us a better future. Amen. Amen. So, God had a good plan for, for, for the prodigal son. The prodigal son may have took a wrong path, but God, knew, God had a plan. A plan so that they can celebrate for him. A plan so that they can do something good. Okay? Yeah. What do we learn from this story? First, God gives us a second chance. Uh, for example, Amen. if we have done something wrong, don't just think God has not forgiven you. God has forgiven you. He, he gives you a second chance. Don't think that uh, you have sinned. He goes to another person. You have sinned. He goes to another person. No. God gives us a second, second chance. Like God gave, God gave the prodigal son a second chance to live. Okay? Yeah. Yes, so. Every time we do something and we don't prosper, it's not in God's plan. Mm -hmm. So, what I get from this is that every time we don't feel prosperous, we can know that we are not doing God's will. The prodigal son, when he was doing, when he was taking care of pigs, he did not feel prosperous at all. Yeah. A son of the rich father, he, he was, he didn't feel prosperous. He didn't feel prosperous at all. So then, <coughs> he looked at, he, at himself and said, let me go back home. Because he didn't feel prosperous. Then he knew that he wasn't doing God's will. Okay? Yes, so... When we don't feel prosperous, like, that feeling that comes to us when we don't feel like... 
we are doing something right. Mm. Nothing is working out. Hmm? When you don't feel that prosperous, <coughs> we don't feel like we are prospering at all. Mm. Hmm? Yeah, like nothing we, is working out. We can know that we are not doing God's will. Mm. Amen. This is not God's plan. And another thing I get from this is that God's timing is better than ours. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, it talks that there's a time for everything. Yeah, three. There's a time for everything. <coughs> okay? So don't think that it's the right time to do something when God hasn't told you. The prodigal son, the prodigal son thought his timing was better than his father's timing. But he was wrong. His father's timing was better. So God's timing is better than our timing. We should, us as human beings, <coughs> we are always supposed to just go and ask God, is it time for me to go to another country? Mm. We are always supposed to go and ask to God, just, don't just leave your house like you are a mad person, you are a thief who has stolen something and he, he, he takes off. No. It, God's timing is better than ours. We should not always rely on God's, on our timing. Amen. We Amen. should always rely on our own timing. On God's mm. timing. And the third thing is that we must repent when we sin against God. Since the father of the prodigal son represents God, and the prodigal son represents us. Us, the prodigal son, hmm? mm. go, we have to go to the father and repent. I have another question. Why does God give us a second chance? Does he just mm. give us a second chance so that we can do this and that? We can be. Mm, mm, he, he gives us a second chance so that we can repent. Mm. He doesn't give us a second chance because he thinks that we are going to do everything right now. He gives us a second chance so that we may repent. His, the father of the prodigal son gave his, his son a second chance so that the son may come to, to him and say, Father, I repent. I pray that I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not fit to be called your son anymore. A son? Saying, I'm not fit to be called your son. <coughs> hmm? And he also said, make me one of your, make me one of your servants. Hmm? Can you imagine saying that? Hmm? Yes. So we, sh we must repent. We can't live a life on earth without repentance. We can't, we can't just go to our father and bypass them. No. We have to repent. Our Father in heaven gives us a second chance so that we can repent. We don't just go to him and say, Father, it will never happen again. No. No, 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 no. We have to go and say, Father, it will never happen again. I pray that you give me the knowledge. Hmm? Amen. You have to repent. Seriously. You have to repent. And another thing I get from this, just thought about it. We should never be jealous. Yeah. Because when the older son, when the older son came, he said that, why didn't you do this for me? I've been serving you for all these years. That's what he said. Hmm? He was getting envious. To be envious is when you are jealous. He was getting envious. Hmm? So we should never do that. We should always be happy for what happens to others. We should not. We should never always brag about ourselves too much. We should. We should yeah. think about others. Okay, like Pastor Kayanja, he thinks about others. When others don't give him money, he still thinks about them. Hmm? He thinks about them, even when in the Jewish dinner, people bought tables, but those were not the only people Pastor gave the Jewish dinner. Pastor. Pastor also was happy for others. He said, I want to also serve the other people who didn't bring tables, who didn't pay. He said that I want to give everybody in the church. 
He didn't leave any any person left out when they were hungry. Eh? Mm -hmm. He 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 thought about he thought about other people's feelings. Mm -hmm. He thought about how they would feel when when they are hungry, mm -hmm. and he said, "I'm not only giving those who paid me money." For the tables, I'm going to also give those who who didn't bring tables and chairs. I'm going to give everybody in the church. Mm -hmm. So you should never be envious. You should never be jealous. Be happy for what for the miracles that happened to other children. Be grateful. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice Amen. and be glad in it. This is not. He didn't say this is the day. F this is the day that we may be envious and we may not be happy. No, this is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice. So we should always be happy for other people and what happens to them. Okay. Yes, and we should always also. The last thing is that we should always always learn to forgive the prodigal son's father when when the when the when the son repented he forgave when someone repents so the the person who you are repenting to is going to forgive so kids out there don't think that when you repent that the people are not going to forgive you people they will forgive you if you have Dance anything wrong, you have stolen meat, some you have stolen chicken, anything. Huh? You just go, you just repent. Amen. Repent. Nothing will happen to you. Even if you have done a mistake that may kill you. Huh? People still forgive you. Because me, as me, I've ever done something I've ever done something wrong. Because sin Sin is everywhere in the ro in the world. Amen. Sin is in every single person you see. You might think Amen. pastors, for them they never sin. Starting from the age of one month to one hundred years, they don't sin. That's what you may think. They are always good, eh? Huh? But even pastors sin. Me as me. Yes, but sometimes when you sin, that when the, when you sin against God, God, the devil will be very happy. But they they will always forgive you. Me, me as me have ever sinned, the worst sin of my life. I sinned. I thought that my father was not going to forgive me, but I just repented and I said, I'm sorry. It will never happen again because I was about to die. <laughs> you know the mistake that I made. Tell us, yeah? tell us, tell us, yes, mm. tell us, <laughs> tell us. But oh, I, I did something wrong. I switched, I switched on a plug, and it was not the wires weren't proper. So when I was going to switch off the shower, electricity <laughs> on the hands. There's something very bad. I was going to die because mm. I even had water on my hands. Mm. And electricity, and that electricity was heavy. Mm. Even my dad, I think he was about to cry, but it was heavy. You may think you are magnet, mm. eh? and it was about to shock me. I, I did it two times with this hand and this hand. Mm. I touched it and I felt. And then when my dad, when my dad came, I I I thought. He he felt after he felt the electricity and he switched it off. He was like, "Why did you do that? Why did you?" And I was like, "Oh my, I was like, oh my God, will my dad forgive me?" But I just let it all go, and I repented. I did what the prodigal son did, and I repented, and my dad forgave me. So, kids out there, you should every time you do something wrong, every, they will forgive you. Your bosses will forgive you. Don't think they are not going to forgive you. They will forgive you. That's true. Hmm? They will forgive you. Okay? Yeah, so that's all I have.
Thank you. My God, thank you so much, Alpha. <laughs> You're talking about the prodigal son. I guess I, I, I'm sure he broke it down properly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was digested well. It was mm-hmm. very learned. I mean, I, I, I learned, I learned. And I'd like to share one of the scriptures that you read from Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. So all our ways may seem right. I mean... We always get seem, uh, tend to think that we are right in all ways, but our ways or our wishes are not God's wishes for us. So it's better that we ask for God's guidance before we actually get fall into the devil's trap. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Trinity. Share with us. Yes, Trinity. Praise God, Church. Amen. My name is Trinity Manila. And the topic for, for today is the, the parable of the prodigal son. What is a parable? A parable is a short story used by Jesus to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. What do children learn from the the parable of the prodigal son? The parable is a good reminder of God's grace and love. Hopefully children know that they are loved by their earthly parents, but they still face punishment or for poor behavior at home. Even God is saddened by sin. He promises to forgive us when we repent genuinely. Children should learn to be content and avoid being greedy over earthly materials. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Trinity. You should not you should not let these things take you. I mean a shoe. I mean it's just a shoe. You're going to go and find it and you're going to leave it there. I mean in just a matter of two years or even six months it will be all be grown and so just feel that I I, I I hope that all the parents make your children feel loved. I and mean, if you don't feel loved, just know we love you. I love you. We love you. And you know who loves you most children? It's God. It's Jesus. Because you know what? He came and died on the cross for just yeah, you yeah. and me. So that is enough proof that he loves us so, so much. And I hope we are learning. I hope you're noting down these scriptures because someday, sometime, they're going to be helping you and me. So me, I'm learning. Me, I'm learning, by the way. So it's welcome, Motefu. Amen. Man, Alpha, man, you, you literally said everything I was going to <laughs> preach. But anyway, uh, my fo- um, so our topic for today is the parable of the father and his sons, or in any other version, the lost son. So my first point is that God loves us even though we sin against him. So like I would like I would like to read from John 3:16 exactly Alpha said um for God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that so that so ever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so what i get from this verse is that God loves us like the same way the the prodigal son's uh what his father loved his son like how Alpha said, the, prodig- the prodigal son represents us, and uh, the father represents God. So God loved his son, or otherwise us, that he gave his, that he gave his son, like the, his son, the only son he has. That's how much God loved us. So my other verse is from Galatians 3.13. It says, by becoming a curse for us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. I mean, by becoming a curse for us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse that the law brings. For For the scripture says, anyone who is hanged on a tree is under a curse. So what I get from this verse is that God loved us so much that he was ready to become a curse. For God, for God says Himself that whoever is hanged on a tree is under His curse. So Jesus Christ became a curse and took all our sins. Cause look, 
you know, in Romans, yeah, in, in Romans it says that the wages of sin, sin is death. So our, our sins were supposed to pay for our sins, not Christ. It was supposed to be us getting all those strokes and dying on the cross. But God loved us so much that he became a curse. They whipped him 39 strokes and was hung on the cross. That's how much God loves us. You know? And my second point is jealousy. You know that part? It says it's in Luke chapter 15, verse 25 to 31. Luke chapter 15, verse 25 to 31 says, um, uh, it says that in the meantime, the elder son was out in the field on his way back. When, when he came closer to the house, he had uh, the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother, I mean, uh, he said, what's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered. And your father has killed the prize calf because he got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So his father came out and begged him to come in but the un the ans uh, but he answered his father look all these years i have worked for you like a slave and i have never disobeyed your orders but what have you given me not even a goat for me and my f for me to feast with my friends but this son of yours wasted all his property on prostitutes and when he comes back you kill the price calf for him my son the father answered you are always here with me and everything i have is yours so what i get from this verse is that he felt bad that all these years and you know what i get is that he, you know uh, his brother was better than the prodigal son like he instead of feeling bad he never knew that he was better than his brother he was better than his brother he is even the the dad the father said that all he his property belongs to him so all this time the br uh, the brother felt jealous that his uh, brother came back when he had wasted all the money and his father uh, what threw him a party but what the brother never knew is that he was better off than his brother who had went and spent all his money on nothing at all he spent all his money so you see, those out there, you may be jealous of someone. Maybe they say, why are they choose? Why are they always choosing him? Can they choose me for once? But you do not know that you're better than that guy. Amen. That man they are choosing. Um, the the guy they are choosing does not. He does not know the things you have. You may be spiritual. Um, you may be spiritual better than him, and he's physically better than you. But it does not matter because, however much you're physically strong, if you're not uh, like spiritually strong and you're low in your spirit, then you know things won't work out. So what this this man never knew is that. What the brother never knew is that he was better than his brother, who had gone out and spent all his money on wasteless things. So everyone out there, I would like to say, if you're there, like you, you think that they're choosing him and, you know, that jealousy thing, just check yourself. Check yourself and see what you have and what he does and what the other person you're jealous of uh d doesn't have thank you thank you Amen. so much Mateo. Eh, eh, eh.
By the way, that is just a special anointing on these children. And if you want it, it is very simple. Just surrender to God so that he can use you this way. I mean, I'm shocked. Okay, I'm not shocked. But I'm shocked. This is, this is powerful. I mean, he mentioned that some, something that God, God does not work with emotions. He works with a person inside you. That's your spirit. So it is not about how you feel. God is not going to work with how you feel or your opinion, uh, your opinion about it. But he's going to work with what your spirit has to say. Because the Bible says that the spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. So uh, do not move by what your flesh is talking about. Do not move by what your flesh is wanting. But move with what your spirit has to say. And... Um, Move with what we, we move with what your spirit has to say, amen. And yes, this is a good time for us to give. I'm sure the numbers on your screen that are writing down your screen. So I'd like us to give the children. If you do not know how to give, please ask mommy or daddy or mm -hmm. auntie that is at home to uh, to help you give. Um, send in your seed, your offertory, because when once you give, you are planting a seed for your children to come the next generations to come after you amen so uh we should ask god that he gives us the spirit because it, do, it does not just come that way it is a, it is a special gift it is it is a special gift we get from god amen um talking more about what about the prodigal son i, I read this story younger um the prodigal son but the Sunday school teachers, when I was young, I think they lied to me a bit, because what I got to, the revelation that I got when I'm older is different from what my old, old Sunday school teachers used to tell me about the prodigal son. I got to understand that it is, the, it is by God's grace that we are brought back to him, that we are given the grace to repent again. It is his love that carries us back, because, I mean, he will never... Leave us. Last yesterday, last night, Pastor Robert was talking about fear at Green Hill. And by the way, before going further, I would like to thank him so much. He talk, he's mentioned a very powerful statement that touched me. He mentioned. He said that short people are very special people. You guys, you do not know the impact that brought to me. I mean, I'm short. Maybe you may not see me when I'm sitting. I'm short. I was so encouraged. I was talking about this short boy that used to play basketball, and he and he won them. I mean, he'd look at them like this, and then he wins, and he's short. And special people, if you're out there and you're short, this is an encouragement. You are very special. Not letting away, they're not taking away these tall, tall people. They're also very special in their own way. But short people, there's just, even Zacchaeus was short, by the way. He was, that's just a special grace. I mean, I think even the prodigal son was short because this grace that pulled him back to his father, it is just special. I mean, not everyone gets the chance to be brought back to the throne of grace. And so we thank God for his grace. We thank God for his love. Nothing could have happened without him. And again, I'm joined with a beautiful panel of these anointed people, and I cannot wait yet again to hear what they have to say. Like we said, we're talking about the parables of Jesus. So I'm going to start with Miriam Gombia. This is Miriam. Good morning. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. It says... On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Say, teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it, he answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and let and love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, and he answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live.
Praise God, everyone. Um, today we are talking about the parable of the Good Samaritan. And th just the first question to anybody, what is a parable? Like a parable. In your own words. Um, what I read, okay, me, I do not know what, but me, what I read about the parable. I think a parable is a short story because it's not usually long. It's a short story um, that only Jesus used, by the way. It's only Jesus that used parables. It's a short story, but with great meaning behind it. So, yeah. Okay. And what I got from the parable of a good Samaritan, it's in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. It basically talks about a man who was on his journey. No, yeah. And then he was beaten up by thieves and tore his clothes, took away some things from him, and left him by the roadside. But three people passed in the parable of the Good Samaritan. First, it was a priest, and I think the priest was a Levite, and also a person was injured was a Levite and the priest just passed by the second person also just passed by but the third person helped what I get from this story is however much difference of your religion of your nationality of your everything the difference that separates you with someone we are all one person we are made by the same God it's not like we were created by, this one was created by God, this one was created by Joseph, by Adam. We were all created by God. And also what I learned from the parable of a good Samaritan is that when your miracle is about to happen, it will take time. Like, when your miracle is happening, there will be a destruction. Like, when they beat him up. But once your miracle comes, it will come in double. Because the third person who helped him, helped him, paid for where he was going to stay, the inn, paid for the treatment without even knowing the person is paying for. And the parable of a good Samaritan also relates to our daily lives, that we should always help our friends in case of any problem. You might be in P1, and you see someone in P3 has fallen down. And you're like, Kasta, we are not in the same class. And they may I don't know him. But you don't know that that person who you have left will be the person helping you in future. Because they say never despise someone. Yeah, thank you. We're talking about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, he's, he talks about the miracle coming double. I mean, he never knew someone is paying for it. These guys beat him up, but maybe he did not have money even to go to the hospital and and um, pay for his treatment. But the Good Samaritan helped him. I mean, why would he get the money to pay the bill, to pay the treatment? So we thank God because he's always there and it's on every situation. Even even the situation that seems to be ugly, the ugliest, he's always there. I mean, he's this, or he's he's always this one person that will always show up in your worst. So we thank God for he, he's always there. Amen. Amen. Yes, Miriam. Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. So I wanted to read from the book of Luke, chapter ten, verse twenty-five. So it says, on one occasion. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? Jesus answered, love the Lord with your heart, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? 
In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And, sorry, when he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the road side. So a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the roadside, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him, and he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denary and gave, you, gave, gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when, he, when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert, the expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. So um, what I understood was by this was, the first question is, who is our neighbor? Because in this situation this man was, was in, he had no one to help him out. This, we can relate this to reality. So sometimes we are hit by the storms of life, but we keep thinking that maybe people do care and will help us out. The actual truth is no one cares about you. To be honest, no one really cares. You will come and like everyone pretends like they are okay. They ask you, are you okay? And you're like, yes, I'm okay. But the truth is, you're not. That one neighbor, God, sees what's deep inside and knows that, that you're deeply hurt and you're not okay. You see this guy? People passed by him, the priest, the person who you would expect to first, the first person who passed by was a priest. You would have thought that maybe that priest would have helped him out. But the priest just looked at him and passed by because he probably had other things to do. He had to go. They say, the Bible says that he had to go down that road. So they didn't, the priest didn't care. The, man, the other man who came, and passed by. He also didn't mind about him. But when that one Samaritan passed by, he felt pity. He felt pity. He did not know what had happened exactly, but he didn't think twice to helping the guy. You understand? He didn't think twice. Many people these days think that relying on other people is what's going to help them. But the actual truth is, People are going to help you, but they're not going to help you the way God would have helped you. You understand? Sometimes we have things we face ourselves that we don't normally tell other people, but God deeply knows about them. God knows us more than anyone does. Sometimes you may think that God does not exist in that storm of life. You understand? God does not, is not there. But in actual sense, he's just waiting on you to call upon his name so that he may help you out. Because in every situation he's there, people go to an extent of saying, I have lost hope, and maybe God does not exist. God does exist. It's your decision. You decided not to allow him to help you out. If this guy had people to help him, they would have helped him. But... People just kept on looking at him. It just shows you that in this life, sometimes you may think that the person you're running to for help is going to help you. But instead, they're just going to leave you to end up in more and more situations that you never thought would happen. So sometimes it's best to trust God. You understand? To trust God. 
though people are going to come, they are going to leave. But God is that one person who will come and never leave. You understand? So uh, yesterday, um, no, I think weeks back, yeah, when I still had my phone, I was reading about some devotion. Um, so it talks about trusting in God. Um, I wanted to read it today for you guys so that like in case it helps and touches someone out there. I hope it does. So it says one day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across the other side and leave the crowd. They took him with them in the boat. I think this is when like when they were taking like like Jesus when they were like going to the boat like that storm that had occurred like during when Jesus had slept in the boat. So he said, Mark describes how Jesus and his disciples spent their day. Jesus was occupied all day teaching about the God's, God's kingdom. This was n not unusual for him to do, but at the end of the day, he got tired and everyone was ready to have some rest. A great time to step back and go to sleep, but no. Jesus has other plans. He asks his disciples to come with him to cross the Sea of Galilee. The Bible says, the Bible text simply writes how Jesus says, let's go, and the disciples do as he, as he asks. They follow his lead without discussion. We too are called to follow Jesus, but how often can we find such faithful obedience to be if Jesus leads our lives in a direction we did not expect and may not understand at all, do we trust his guidance and do we do what he asks of us? We do accept gambling, grumbling that his plans are apparently different from ours. Yeah. So it hit me when they asked how often do we trust God? We understand. Do we trust his guidance and do what he asks of us? Sometimes we tend to say that we do trust God, but how really do you know that you really trust God? If God is leading you through something, how do you trust him is a question. How do you know that you're trusting God? Um, I'd like to say, Faithfulness, being faithful and obedience, does not take cost you anything, for real. But when you decide not to obey, that's when you have to pay the price. God wants us to fully trust him, and by trusting him doesn't mean that you always do what you think you want. Trusting God sometimes means that you're supposed to sacrifice yourself, doing his will, though it may seem like it may seem like you're you don't want to do it you understand eh but doing his will means that you have to ignore what other what other options are and trust what god has to say about you so i would like to read a verse in mark chapter 4 verse 35 it says that day when the evening came, he said to the disciples, Go to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. They were also in the boat with him. So as you see, in the storm, they were also with God. They were with Jesus Christ. But Christ had fallen asleep. So the storm was heavy. So to calm it down, needed God. That's the same thing that happens in our lives. The situations we face, sometimes you think you're going to calm it down by making a solution. But sometimes you make a solution. That solution may not turn out as a solution, but instead creates a bigger problem. That's why God is the solution to every problem. That storm, that situation that you're passing through, it may seem hard, but... God is there. All you need to do is trust him. 
follow your follow what he says don't follow what you have to say though you may complain grumble but the truth is once you obey there's no cost to pay once you disobey there's a cost to pay amen thank you so much miriam uh, let's uh, she's she's talking about trusting in god and we're talking about the parable of the good samaritan most of the time we don't we tend to turn away from god because we think that we know better we think that we can make decisions for ourselves and if we fall into disobedience what we never what we never get to know is that it's a trap from the devil and we end up falling into it but let us cry out loud from that deepest place when you find yourself down there uh, yesterday i read a scripture in jonah chapter 2 verse 1 and it said that and jonah cried out unto god in the belly of the fish you can imagine in the belly of the fish i mean he reached a point and he knew that there is no other option now but here yeah, in my deepest in my deepest place in my deepest worry it's only god that i can cry out unto i mean this is the only option he trusted in god at that moment and god used him mightily in Nineveh. so you too also out there who is watching and listening god is calling you to trust him maybe you've trusted your life with other with other people with friends but jesus he's that stingy friend you know those people that are always there in your hardest moments i mean whenever you have a problem they will always cross that is jesus in your spiritual life that is jesus in your heart whenever you have a problem he's always passing by i mean he'll always find you and he'll always he will he will always uphold you and he will embrace you so let us embrace his righteousness and let us be faithful to him last month we talked about faithfulness and the other fruit of the holy spirit so let us put it into action because it cannot happen if we do not put it into action. Amen. Thank you very much, Faith, and everyone who has shared. Um, well, when I read through um, Luke chapter 10, verse um, 25 to 37, um, the main picture that I get is love and kindness. Um, well, last month, as Faith said, we have been going through the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And, well, when I read through this verse, the only thing that hit me was love and kindness. So, um, verse 37, actually, no, verse 29, um, the question, there's a question that says, who is my neighbor? Um, while Joe was sharing, he said, he gave an example of, um, if you see, like, a pitu kid falling down, and he said, like, that's not my friend. I won't help them or anything like that. Um, well, um, who is your neighbor? That's the question I want to answer. Well, most times it's very hard for you to help people around you. Most times when you do not get along with them. And, well, God, those are the very people God expects us to help. Those are the people who will actually help you in the future. You do not know when you will come across them. Maybe in, um, when you need a job or anything like that, they'll, they'll be always there to help you. So um, it may be very, very hard for you to help that person because they might have treated you badly or something like that. But that's when God really expects you to actually help them and be there for them. Because, yes, um, you may have your friends and stuff like that. Um, they're the ones who say, I'll always be there for you. I shall never leave you. They always say those words. Um, but, well, their friends come and go. Um, they, w they will never be there forever. There shall be a moment when you will not be friends. There shall be a moment when you'll be friends. But God is the only person we can rely on in our whole entire life. Because the moment you give your life to Jesus, it's like you have attached yourself to him. You're not, you're not going to get separated away from him. It's only you who decides to get away from him when you do not follow his commands or when you stop reading your bible or when you disobey god that's when maybe you move away from him it's not him that moves away from you it's actually you who moves away from him um i'll continue and verse 36 verse 37 says jesus said go and do likewise um yes um 
this Samaritan helped um, the man who they like tore the clothes and stuff like that. Um, well, I don't have much, some like a lot to say about that, but the statement "Go and do likewise" speaks a lot. Um, God is trying to tell us to do, um, to show love, as this person showed love, to as this Samaritan showed love, because look, it's a priest who passed by. It's a priest who passed by. He's a person we expect to be the one to help, but he did not. Well, people in the world have two faced faces. I don't know how, if that even makes sense. But they have like two sides of themselves. They will go to church, they have a different character. They go home, they have a different character. They go at school, they have a different character. And most times people like that are backstabbers. And that is that is very true from my experience. People are like that are very good backstabbers. And most times they do not care about your feelings. They do not care if you're hurt. They do not care about they don't care about anything about you. Maybe they just want something because you're um maybe um a president's child. That's why they want to be friends with you. But God shall be there for you anytime you need him. And I believe you watching me right now, you may want something from God. And maybe um, you have this kind of friends, you want to let go of them. Well, it's very hard to let go of friends, but most times it's very necessary too. Because um, maybe the ones holding you back from God, maybe the ones leading you into um, sin, maybe bad habits, that's what leads you away from God. Then you come and start saying that God has left you. Well, it's not God who has left you. Um, well, verse 37 also talks about love. Um, 37, no, 27. Um, verse 27 says, he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is what I've just been sharing. Um, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Most people love themselves more. They think that they're on top of the world. They feel like hey, they are overhyped. You know these kids at school who are overhyped? Yeah, those kind of kids that think that they're on top of the world and stuff like that. Exactly. Um, well, we are all equal, first of all. If you're watching when you're one of those kids who are hyped a lot. Um, well, that gives you even a greater opportunity to show love and actually treat others how you, how that, how you treat yourself. Because um, maybe, yeah, you have this cool stuff. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you have to treat others badly. Um, well, if you're on top of the world, okay, at school, maybe that even gives you a better opportunity to teach others how to love others, okay? Um, well, doing God's will mo is most times hard because we see in verse 37, it says, go and do likewise. So um, this week, strive to show love, kindness, um, to people around you because yeah, it's very hard to do that But in the end it shall be fruitful for you. It shall help you. It shall Strengthen you and yeah, I believe it's going everything is going to work out for your own good. Thank you uh, I, I told you this part was going to be powerful you guys. Hey, she talks about those things of hyped kids at school most of the time God gives you this grace or this opportunity to be hyped, not to not to make others feel so less of themselves, but you to make them feel be hyped the way you are hyped. I mean, for God to share your vibe with others. I mean, you are not going to be hyped alone, but God has given you this grace at school. Like I think two, three weeks back, I asked someone, one of my friends, I asked her, "You are you my friend? Hmm. Show me if I sit down." And she's like, you are very freestyler. And I'm like, okay. You, I, I, and she told me, I love the way you do not stress about life. And you have taught me that way. And I, and you know what I thought about? I thanked God because with this hype and vibe of mine that I have, I've, not, I've been able to use it the good way, to impact someone's life the good way. I've not told them to be hyped for clubs, but to be high on God. Yes, I mean, you do not have to use that a lot of knowledge because I'm, I'm, I'm sharp in all ways. I think I'm sharp. And I thank God that he has given me the grace to 
share my knowledge with others the good way so god has not given you your 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 knowledge and wisdom to make others feel solace about them about their grades about how they have performed but instead to help them discuss those numbers together amen and gabby abby also say talked about um the prayers that we make Sometimes be there praying, oh, those people that pray, God, you've left me, why, why me, why me, oh, Lord, now what, what? It is you who has left God, God has never left you. And it is you who decided to walk away, and then when you reach there, you're like, God, you left me. And yet it's you, I mean, it's you who has walked, but you never see your mistakes. That's the problem with us humans. You will never see it. Like, pride is proud. You can never see it. You're there telling God, I mean, you're wasting, God has a lot of people to think about. You're here telling him, God, you have left me. How? God has never left us since the day of creation. Since he, The Bible says that above all the things that God created, God loved man so much so he will never leave you he will always stand there and he'll wait for you you will go you go to Masindi. you go to canada you go to what he will always be there i mean he'll still be in your mother's house waiting for you until you reach a point and you break down and you repent like the prodigal son that we talked about in the first set you repent and you're not going to repent and i'm not going to do it again you have to repent sincerely like alpha said break down break down and tell god i am not doing this again i'm asking for more grace to turn back because as uh, because the grace of god is still here amen, amen. so if you walk away walk back as because you walked away so you still you can still walk back i mean your legs are not broken walk back because the grace is still there. Once the grace leaves, you're done. If you walk away and the grace is still, and the grace is done, you're done. I mean, God can, because the wages of sin is death. So you will sin, you sin, you sin, you sin. You keep eating that chapat, you keep pinching, pinching, pinch, but at the end, it will be nothing left. I mean, it's a round circle. You're going to pinch and pinch until it is no more until your life is normal because let me say a chapat is your life amen so it is round i don't know i've used a chapati but it is round so whenever you keep sinning it's like you're pinching a part of it you're pinching and eating it and that's going to reach a moment when that life is done and when that grace is done and what is left death and do you want to die no I mean, I am one of those people that want to see the rapture. I mean, I am so excited, not with all these movies I've seen. So, anyways, let us, let, uh, let, us, let us make it principle to trust in God. And again, I want to remind us to give because it's principle. It's a principle thing. Let us give because even Christ gave. Thank you. Because even Christ gave. So, if you do not know how to give, ask mommy, ask daddy. To, to help you with their phones and you'll be blessed, amen, because even our pastors have been blessed because of giving, because they gave. Pastor Robert keeps encouraging us every day to give and everything. And again and again, I want to thank God for our pastors, for giving us the opportunity for yesterday, for Pastor Robert Jr., for Mad's company. I mean, we thank God it was successful, at least one life, I'm sure was changed i'm sure one story was turned around amen so uh right about now we're going to have holy we're going to have holy communion if you're at home yes you're at home get bread if you've not yeah get bread ask mommy can do not steal it do not don't i mean god is watching ask mommy can i please have some bread we're going to have holy communion. actually call everyone in the house until then, we're going to have Holy Communion at this very moment. You can get soda. I mean, me, me and my me and these sisters and brothers of mine are holding it. So, mommy, please don't deny Abigail that bread. We are going to, yeah, we're going to have Holy Communion. Juice, water, soda, pick and peel. It will all work. Amen. So, <coughs> this juice will represents the blood of Jesus and the bread and the bread let's and the bread his body that was beaten that was nailed 
for our for our sake and that that was nailed for just you and me and and as we're taking this blood into the let us remember that he lives in us the sacrifice that he that he laid at the at the at calvary at the cross just for you and me like we've been talking about the prodigal son that grace that was given to the prodigal son that love that when while we eat this let us remember the body that was broken just for you and me and um we're going to take we're going to take the juice so i hope mommy i hope you've given abigail the bread amen Abigail, Abigail, you got the bread? So we're going to first eat. And we thank God for his body that was broken for you and me. Amen. So let's eat, children. Eat, eat. This is your time to shine. <laughs> and let us drink. Guys, done. Me, I'm done. <laughs> so we thank God so much for His body and for His blood that was broken for you and me. And it's a big girl. Um, I just wanted to pray for everyone who's watching us and you're sick, maybe in the hospital, maybe at home. Um, I believe that God is going to work out for you. Amen. And God has never forks forsaken you, and He shall always be there, as everyone has said on this set. And, you know, the only way to um, um, come to God is by praying and seeking his face. Because God is always there for you. He's just waiting for you to come to him. So I just want to pray for everyone who's watching and who's sick. Let's stretch our hands and pray. Father, I, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for each and everyone who's watching us right now. Father, each and everyone who's sick, who's brokenhearted, Father. Father, I pray that you may heal them, you may cleanse them with the blood, Holy Spirit of God. Father, I break each and every chain of sickness and disease. Father, I break each and every chain of of death, Holy Spirit of God. Their portion is to live, not to die, Holy Spirit of God. That their heads and not their tails shall prosper, and all Holy Spirit are going to do great exploits in the world, Holy Spirit Amen. of God. Yes, Father, I believe this is not their time to die. And I know, Holy Spirit, you're going to work out for them. Father, you're going to show them that you really exist, Father. Yes, Father, Lord. you're going to reveal your face to them, Holy Spirit yes, of God. Jesus. Father, I break each and every chains of the devil, Holy Spirit of God, yes, that is Lord. bringing them to death, Holy Spirit of God. Yes, Father, Lord. each and every family that's being torn apart because of sickness and disease. Father, I believe, Holy Spirit of God, that you're going to work out for them. Mm -hmm. Father, you're going to show them the, your face, Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe by this week, Holy Spirit of God, they're going to be well. And Father, you're going to go to show them, Holy Spirit, your love and your kindness. Yes, In Jesus. the mighty name of Jesus, I prayed and believed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I believe that you have received your healing. If you have believed God for your healing, I believe that you have received it today. And we thank God that today has been a very wonderful day. We have had a very amazing panels today and we've discussed. And I hope you noted down the scriptures. You guys, I told you to write down the scriptures. Why didn't you ask mommy for that? But now you see, the service is done. <laughs> but anyways, want to welcome you again to the new month. So we're going to be joining the main service with Pastor Robert Kayanza. And we want to thank him again for giving us this platform. And Pastor Jessica Kayanza, we love you very much. And have a good day. Bye. as we are getting into know him through Holy Communion, that the God we serve is a God of blessings. He's a God who gives blessings. Somebody say blessings. blessings. This is the kind of God we believe in, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look at when he created man in the very beginning. All the problems man has today is man engineered. 
God made the earth without the devil. The devil is the intruder. He invented, invaded this earth. We failed to take care of the garden. He didn't come to the earth. Of course, the angels warned in the book of Revelation that the devil has come to you with great wrath. Today we see sicknesses and diseases we've never had before on which man has no solution. Even the pharmaceutical cause cannot catch up with what's going on. I mean, in the midst of Ebola, we have COVID, COVID. SARS, SARS, then we have monkeypox. Monkey pox. Now, no one who knows what's coming. So, health is being threatened, but also the financial economies of the world. The world today, financially, is not where it's supposed to be. But because of only two years of lockdown, many financial levels were shifted. So people don't have what they're supposed to have. But you look at what God promised Adam when he made him. He made him in his image, and he gave him a garden. And God God blessed them. You see, that's what God begins. Whether it's with Abraham, whether it's with you, he begins with blessing you. That's what he starts with. And he said, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Even even if you don't do anything else as a believer, as a child of God, and we only do this, we as the church, we as Miracle Center, we only do this, we will serve the world. We will bring glory to God. People will come to know God. The problem, we don't know him. And because we don't know him, Apostle Paul put it this way. He said, I want to know you and the power of resurrection. If Apostle Paul can say, after meeting Jesus, after raising the dead, after writing all what he wrote, and he said, I want to know you. In fact, he said that I may know you, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of suffering, being made conformable unto his death. There's something we don't know about God, but our God begins by blessing in Genesis. He said, I'll bless thee. When he came to Abraham, he said, I'll bless thee. He's a God of blessing. No curses. He's a God of blessing. And I pray that from today, you will know and have a relationship with the God of blessings. Even the children God has given you are for blessings. Doesn't matter how they came in this world. They are a blessing. I said they are a blessing. And because our God is a God of blessing, we never talk about the blessings of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. So when God is talking about blessing, why are you adding sorrow? Curses, demons, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. When you look at Abraham's life, you don't see him conversing and talking about demons or whatever it is. Because once he discovered God, he discovered blessings. In Genesis 12, God said, I'll bless thee. And I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless those who bless thee. And when it comes to curse, I will curse those who curse you. But you want to curse those who curse you instead of believing the blessing God has for you. Oh, I pray that we will understand our God and the power of his resurrection. Now, listen to this. So as we look at the God of blessings, that's what you see through the life of Abraham, through the life of the saints, through the life of, is a God of blessing. Lift your hand and say, my God is a God of blessing. Is a God of blessing. You know, he told Abraham, I mean Adam, he said, protect the earth. Take dominion. But he didn't. He lost it. But the amazing thing that you discover with God, 
When Jesus was here, he said something. In the upper room, he said, this is my body. He took the bread. And he took the, the cup, the wine. He said, this is my blood. This is my body. Why did he do that? Because when you are dealing with man, Holy Communion is the real power of God. Is one thing you do that will totally disarm the powers of darkness. So Jesus said, introduce the bread and the blood. So this is my body. And this is my blood. Let's go to Genesis. When Adam sinned, what did God do? He provided him with the blood. He killed an animal. And that was the blood. And Jesus said, the bread is my body. So he took a piece of the body of the animal, which was now the sacrifice for man, and he wrapped it around Adam. So they came out of Genesis in the garden with the blood and the body. The blood and the body. The skin was the body. And that's how God decided that if I'm going to preserve man, listen to this, preserve man until his destiny is done, until the number of his days are fulfilled, until he has carried out his purposes on earth. I'll have to use the body and the blood. I'll have to use the body and the blood. I know all of us are going to die. But it's not fair for you to die before you fulfill the numbers of your days. Sickness and disease is everywhere. And people are going to die. But the Holy Communion is going to preserve you until the day of the Lord has come. It is going to preserve you. It's not only just to protect you or just to heal you, but it's going to preserve you. There is a job to be done. There is a message to be preached. There are nations to be reached. So death should leave your house. And that's what, because Adam, Adam, God said, in the day you eat this, you will die. God realized that Adam is going to die on that very day. So he provided the blood and the body. And he covered him. People think he just covered his nakedness. No, he covered him from whatever was coming to kill him. Holy communion. Holy communion, where the blood and the body is, you are covered. I say you are covered. I say you are covered. Lift your hand and say, cover me, Lord. Cover me, Lord. Cover my family. Cover my dreams. Cover me. His body is what covers us. You hide in him. He lives in you. You live in him. You are covered. It's the insurance. It is the insurance, the divine insurance. You may be seated. So what he did, he provided the blood and the body in the form of a skin. So that Adam will live. And Adam lived 930 years. Of course, in the heavenly, he died in one day. Because one day to the Lord is a thousand years. And he died 930, which means he died before he was, he was one, one day old, according to God. But according to the Esas, he fulfilled his destiny. He produced the human race. You will not die. Ragose Prekasa, you will not die until you have fulfilled all that God has for you and all that you desire. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay, okay, I have to go quickly here. Sit down, please. So, what happened to the people? So, let's look at people who go, whom God gave in Genesis to Adam. Come straight. 
the Bible said, and Noah found grace. What is grace? Grace is salvation, is favor unmerited. It is the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. That's the meaning of grace. Because Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace ye are saved through faith and none that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, which is Jesus, the blood, and the bread. So grace means, that's what Noah got. What we got, Noah got. What Noah got, we have. And he built an ark. Which means, you are too going to build something that has never been built before. For the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. Sit down. What about Abraham? And the Bible said in, in Genesis 14 and verse 8, and Melchizedek, a type of Christ, because Melchizedek means the one who has no beginning or end. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. So to Abraham, he brought him bread. That's why Abraham is the father of all those believe. He's the grandfather of all believe. We are connected to Abraham not because he's Jew. Not because, actually, he was not a Jewish. Abraham is not Jewish. Abraham is a Syrian. He's just a believer who produced Jews. You as a believer, you're going to produce a nation. When God gives you Holy Communion, you are now ready to produce a nation. That's why he said to Abraham, I'll make you a great nation. Child of God, the blessing of God to bless you does not depend on the Uganda government, neither on what's happening in Russia. No one will determine how rich you become. Uganda government today can declare that we don't want Christians anymore. We've gone back to our gods. We don't want these gods. They can even call Christianity a, a religion of, of, the, of the whites. But if you're a believer in this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he will bless you regardless. God's blessing, God's protection has nothing to do with what goes around the world. Saints, fewer prices may go up to 20,000 a liter. But he will give you a car, will give you the fuel. Your protection has nothing to do with what medicine is there. Uganda through COVID, it is proof that God had mercy on this country. Because it's not about immunization. It's not about the medicine. We had nothing. We had nothing. And I don't think we have immunized as much as, much as America has. Or Europe has. They're still having COVID. They're still battling with it. China is still losing people. Child of God, what's happening here? Because even before COVID came, as a country, we prayed. Before we even knew there was one, one, one victim, we prayed. We prayed. And God said, okay. Others are looking at other things. You are looking at me. I will cover you. Glory to God. Child of God, I want you to understand this. Your next level of wealth is not going to come because the budget is favoring you. Because someone is connected to you. It's going to come because you are connected to the Almighty God. Glory to God. Now, we don't understand the blessings of God. Sit down, please. We don't understand the blessings of God. When God talks about blessing, and I talk about blessing, those are two different things. Those are two different things. The blessings you think is not what God thinks. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, it gives you a glimpse, a little glimpse of what God means to bless. 
it shall come to pass in that shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command thee which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth God will set you above upon all the nations of the earth is he talking to the Jews is he talking to anybody no God talks to one person and that is a nation Abraham was one with Sarah and he said I'll make you a great nation you are about to produce a nation no you're not hearing what I mean you are saying but I'm in Uganda okay be controlled by Uganda but there is a nation of believers in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being. You can have your own currency. We don't understand when God talks about blessings. Because you, you think you depend on what you have. Okay, verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. They will come on you, take over you, and also overtake you. Which means God is going to bless you that there's no room for curses and demons and poverty, but also He will over the blessing will overtake you. So the direction you are going to take, there will be no poverty or curses. Come on, say blessing come upon me. Blessing come upon and overtake me. Overtake me. In other words, you're going to be covered by blessings. May God give you a deeper level of blessing that even the devil cannot penetrate that. Sickness will not penetrate. That's what he's talking about. That I'm going to cover you with blessings that even sickness, disease, or calamities, or pandemics will not penetrate you. Then he says, Verse 3, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. You hear God when he talks about blessing, he talks about cities, he does not talk about villages. And I don't know where God, some people think about a village. I'm going to the village, change the vocabulary, say, I'm going in the field. If you are going home in the village, you are going in the field, non-village, because God does not believe in villages. Now I'm shaking you. He doesn't believe in villages. He doesn't talk about villages. Okay. Cain sinned, killed his brother. But when he came in the presence of God, he didn't live and build a village. He left and built a city. And at that time, there were no plans for cities. No one was designing a city. But a man who had been redeemed, forgiven, goes out and builds a city. When you go back to your village, you're going to turn it into a city. We are not living what we are supposed to be. We are not doing what we are supposed to do. And Cain knew his wife. Come on. And Cain knew his wife. And she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city. Look at Jesus where he was born. Look at Jesus in Luke. Where he was born. He wasn't born in a village. Now I'm shaking. I'm telling you the truth. This is the Bible. The problem with us, we read things and we don't apply common sense of faith. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. City to city.
May God anoint you to build a city. So your blessing has nothing to do with Kampala city. When Daniel left Jerusalem Daniel, and they went to Babylon, Babylon, they found people erecting wrong gods. But the blessing of Daniel did not depend on the holiness of the city. This idea believers have I wish we are all united and then we can do something and then we can do something. God doesn't work that. He finds one man. In fact, he said, is there a man who can stand in the gap? Not a group of men. God is not going to depend on everybody to bless you. He's going to depend on you to bless everybody. I'm sorry I'm talking to dead people. You are looking until you organize everybody. You are totally mistaken. That's not how God works. And God found Abraham. And God spoke to Abraham. Lot was there. He didn't talk to Lot. He didn't talk to Sarah. He talked to Abraham. God is looking for someone. Oh my God. God is looking for someone. So when God sits down, when God talks about blessings, we have no idea of what he's saying. Blessings are that be in the city. Blessings are that be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle. Listen, God is talking about fruit, not fruits. Fruit and the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit. The increase of thy kind and the flock of thy sheep. In other words, God said, if you know me and how I work, I'll make you self-sufficient so that others will depend on you. God is not trusting your clan. He's trusting you. God does not trust you. Your tribe is trusting you. It's not trusting Uganda. It's trusting you. It's not trusting the human race. It's trusting you. Verse 5. Blessed shall thy be that basket and thy store. Thy basket. Now, 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 the, the many understanding. If you tell a Muganda a basket, they bring a chibbo. If you talk to someone who is picking up the Indians who pick up tea, this is what they do. They wear this one on their head. And they pick and throw. This is what they say. Those are picking up uh, tea. If you talk to other people, like the people in Israel, a basket was as big as my size. You could put a man in there. It was a bell. Because when God was talking to the woman of Zarephath, a widow, he said, your bell will not close. When the spies and Apostle Paul were being taken out of the city, they said they put them in a basket. They hid them in a basket. I can't fit this. So when we talk about God and his levels of understanding, it's totally different from your level. Because culture and tradition has reduced what God calls a basket to a kabbo kebi gali. So when he talks about, I'll bless 
Okay, then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. So when God talks about the things of God, you automatically bring it in your tribe. You bring it in your vocabulary. And that's what the Bible says, you have made the word of God of none effect because of your tradition. The word of God cannot work miracles as it's supposed to work because of your tradition. Thursday, I was in Chiboga. Yesterday, I went to open up a miracle center church. This pastor has been with us for 40 years. This woman came to me when I was young. At the beginning of the ministry, 40 years ago, I was about, I was about 19. She said, God has sent me to be my pastor. And I want your God. In Paida. That's where I was yesterday. So we dedicated the church. Her young son is now the pastor of that church. Her second son is the bishop of Zombe in church of uganda her second son church of uganda listen to me people of god her first child is the deputy ambassador of uganda in canada deputy ambassador of uganda canada the other son is a secretary to the president of Uganda works in State House. Secretary this single mother, single mother no. as you put it here, let the people see it. So that you become wholly jealous. That is the lady. Put up the video of her son. Take out videos of her Government officials were there. You show government. That is Hassan. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a bishop Mutabani in we. Anglican church. Bishop this is the baby's boy who is the pastor yeah, of Miracle Center. Miracle Center. How do you produce people like that? When you a single mother because she believed in the anointing in this house. She believed God for 40 years in the anointing of this house. And one day, he's going to become Archbishop of Church of Uganda. That one. Listen. Here you are. At the head of, this lady is in Zombe. Here you are. Here. You are the center of the anointing. And you don't even have a border border. So when God talks about blessing, and I know you are getting it, you get it and you put it in your brain, you put it in your understanding, you put it in your budget, you put it in this. That lady gave up her land, the little land, to put the church. But yesterday, the crowds gathered. Miracles happened. People said, We've never seen such a crowd in the city. I, I want you to understand this. when God talks about you are mine, you are my child. I loved you with an everlasting love. I'll be with you, I'll guide you. What do you think is talking about? Blessed shall be thy basket in the store. Thy basket and thy store. How many of us are building stores now? 
A banker told me of a man. He's not a believer. Not a believer. He borrowed money from the bank. When maize was at 900. A kilo. And he said that better borrow money and buy maize. And he rented stores. Now he has 5,000 tons of maize. Last week, the Kenyan company came and bought all these maize. At 2,000 shillings per kilo. That is five point something billion shillings. In profit. That is 1.3 million dollars in just nine months. He's not a believer. It's not only just to hear, but to do. The power of God is not just to hear, it's in the doing. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers. Blessed, okay, blessed shall thou be. Thou be when coming. And blessed thou shall be when you go out. Go quickly. And the Lord shall cause thy enemies to rise up against thee. To be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way. And flee before thee seven ways. Now stop fighting your enemies. Because God wants to give you a movie. He wants to create a movie for you. They will come one way and they flee seven ways. He wants to kill them while you are watching. You concentrate on your blessing. The devil is wasting your time. Now look, the, read the whole Bible of Genesis. In the life of David, in the life of everybody, these people don't talk about Satan, demons, curses. They talk about God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You are spending days, hours, trying to deal with what God has already dealt with. He prepares a table before my enemies. So sometimes you need enemies God to give you a good meal. Huh? Why? Do we know our God? Do we know how he works? So this gives you a little, and the Lord shall command. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. I thought I was, I was already blessed. But he says, after you are blessed, and you've done all he said, then he commands another blessing. The way you clap your hands, may the Lord deliver you from curses. He said, the Lord will command a blessing to come upon you. Our God is a God of blessings. I said, our God is a God of blessings. Tell the person next to you. He said, my God is a God of blessings. He's going to bless me when I come in, when I get in, when I go in the city, when I'm in my field. He's going to bless me. Don't waste my time telling me about other stuff. I want to concentrate on my God. I am his beloved and my beloved is mine. Listen, the, the book of, uh, of, of, of Proverbs, Song of Song of, I think it's Song of Solomon. He, he said, my, my, my beloved is mine and, 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 and he's also mine. There's that verse. 
God is yours. And you are his. So God talks about blessings. So he gave Abraham. And Abraham was blessed. Bread and wine. That's how God has chosen to come into your life. To make you the head and not the tail. To protect you from everything that will come. I know someday we are going to die. I know all of us are going to die. But you should not die before your time. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. You should not die until your children have grown and produced children because you're going to leave them an inheritance. Abraham and, and Sarah was preserved even at the age of 90 and 100 until they produced Isaac and they didn't die immediately. They raised him. Your children are not going to be orphans. Amen. Okay, sigala and go today. I say your children are not going to be orphans. Amen. He said he says something here which is very powerful. Oh, I'm running out of time. So give me five minutes. I'm going to get you. Sit down, please. So he said to Abraham that. Now, for the children of Israel, you say, where did they get the Holy Communion? Holy communion oh, oh, oh. You want to know where they get the Holy Communion? Do you know why the Bible said there were no feeble among them? There was no barren among them. Their clothes were not tearing. Because in the morning, he gave them bread. In the evening, he gave them blood. Quails provided the blood. It is about blood and bread. Somebody said blood and bread. Blood and bread. Say it again. Blood and bread. Give them bread. And he gave them blood. In fact, the Bible said he will bless the our bread and water. And thus he will keep sickness from us. He will. Exodus 23. And he shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. And thy water. And I will take sickness away from thy middle. So in other words, if you can't get this fruit of the, of the vine. You can take Holy Communion bread and water. And he said that's when I will take sickness out of your medicine. Healing is in the atonement. When Jesus died on the cross. And he blessed for us. He paid for our sins. By his stripes, we are healed. The Bible said, who is own self bear our sins in our body, in his own body, on the tree. That we being dead in sin should live into righteousness by whose stripes, by whose stripes we are healed. He bore our sickness in his body and he took the bread and said, this is my body. This is my body. They had finished eating. And he took the bread. He took the leftover. Most of us, when we eat, we don't consider the leftovers. So Jesus said, the things you're going to reject, the things you're going to take as, as, as trivial, is what I put emphasis on. After they had eaten, he took the bread and the wine and said, this is my body, this is my blood. In other words, without my body and my blood, you are not yet in me. 
you are not yet in me. You must believe in my body. Because I secured Adam in order to fulfill his destiny by blood and body. You need the blood and the body. That's where you are in me. In fact, Jesus said, if you do not eat my flesh and don't drink my blood, you are not in me. John 6 56 says he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwell in me and I in him so if I want God if I want more of God I'm telling you this is not just a religious sacrament this is not just a, 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 a religious tradition this is where he comes in you and you get in him yeah. This is where heaven comes in you and you are in heaven. And if God is in you, who can be against you? Start thinking God is in me. The hope of glory. God is in me. Lift your hand and say, God is in me. Many people talk about it. I think demons in me. I think curses in me. Shut up. God is in you. I say God is in you. And you are in God. Oh, you're going to build a city. When God is in you. And you are in God. Oh, you're going to do wonders. You are becoming the head. And on the tail. That's why people of God, we are poor. We are poor because religion points you to a wrong direction in order to manipulate you and control you. You're not succeeding because of this. No, I'm not succeeding because I don't know him. I don't know how he blessed Abraham. I don't know how he blessed Isaac. I don't know how he blessed all the people. Lift your hand. Say, I want to know him. We don't know the riches of his glory. We have no idea. Why will Jesus is about to die? He takes bread and wine and he said do this in remembrance of me why did he say we are like a Jew to remember me why did he said on this day I'll die for you keep it as a memorial why did he say come to Jerusalem at Calvary where I die what did he say? Because this is attainable anywhere. We were in Zombo. The cripple walked. The blind eyes opened. The sick were healed. The other Thursday, I was in Chiboga, the same thing happened. Friday night, I was here on the overnight, and miracles happened. Child of God, it's not about a location, it's about a God. You hear me? It's not about a nation, it's about a person. You make a nation. Go, so go from I say you make a nation. Where, where the nation does not make you. That's why in the midst of poverty, you are going to be rich. In the midst of a drought, you 
out. You're going to be rich. Where is my picture of the rain? My picture of the rain. My video of the rain. In the midst of dryness, it is raining at the farm. Because global warming cannot contain me. I have the keys of the kingdom. I bind and heaven binds. I loose and heaven loose. You are not going to condition the way I live based on your budget. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for your last enthusiasm. Never talk to Mongalo. Even they don't clap. Is a Mutima Gwang and Mukubi and Galo. Clapping my hands in my heart. Did they, did they cut my mango? I mean, did they cut my mango? Baji Saze over Gitario. Gigi and Bona Zabat was a good Friday. You know. You're not going to tell me because Russia is fighting Russia with Ukraine. Shimani, what have you? Shimani, what have you? No way. Why would he give Abraham Holy Communion? Why did he give the apostles Holy Communion? At the end of the day, these, these guys were so rich, the money oh, came at their feet. You're not going to control my life and refuse me. No, 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 sir. Uh. Uh. This one came this week. And you know, somebody saw it in Japan. And he said, I've seen your mangoes. Give us the profile of your mango. What do you use? If there are no chemicals, it's organic. And uh, send us samples. Where is the sample? Of? We'll give you a contract to supply mangoes to Japan. To you think you're going to control my life? No way. God Jehovah is more than enough. <laughs> What is my rain? Uh -huh. That's what happens at the farm. Because the just shall live by faith. May money come to you. May the blessing of God come to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. May the power of Almighty God. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I need to get you out of here. So he took the bread and the cup. He said, This is my blood. He said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood i am in them and they are in me do you know why reverends grow older and these catholic priests do you know why because everywhere they go to conduct a service they take holy communion Listen, Jesus is teaching people how to pray. And one of the things he told us to ask, daily bread. Religion turns it into, <laughs> I think he meant the word. You think God is stupid? He doesn't know what a giraffe is. 
Why did he put the, the bread there? One time I had a politician say, you should stop praying for daily bread. You should have plenty and store it. Don't you think God knows what you were talking about? You politicians. Stick to politics and leave the word of God alone. God knew what he was talking about. To preserve you, to protect you against all these diseases which want to take you out before your time happens, it is through Holy Communion. My daughter is alive today because of Holy Communion. I recommend it to you in your house every day. I call it. A meal that heals. This is a meal that heals. Do this in remembrance of me. Come on, ministers. But minister, distribute Holy Communion. Jesus yes. kept his power in the Holy Communion. Judah Iscariot, Judah Iscariot who didn't eat it that day, he committed suicide. Peter, Peter actually cut a man's ear off and blood fell on his clothes. Because he took Holy Communion, the evidence disappeared. Jesus put, Jesus put back the ear. Christ has redeemed us from the cross of the Lord. Having become a cross for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, so that the blessing of Abraham may come to the Gentiles. Gentiles, the blessing of the Lord is coming to the Gentiles. You're going to build a nation, you're going to build a city. You're going to build a city. You're going to build a city. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Stand up on your feet if you have already received. Of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Of Jesus, it was as white as snow. Now I don't know why these people decide to give the body of Christ the bread as little as this. Jesus took bread. To the man of Emmaus, they took bread. I remember when we were up there. A man, a Muslim man came looking for his family. Very furious and angry. It was during those tough times. No food, hunger, but we used to take Holy Communion. And we could take the whole bread and pass it around. And everybody could break. And then we could distribute many loaves. Finally, he entered the church. We used to use these uh, plastic mugs. And we fill it quencha. And everybody, or two, three people could have one or one person have one. So the man grabbed the whole loaf. Took off a big piece and said, the rest is for my kids. And he started drinking. When the service was over, he came to me. 
He said, I want to talk to you. Say, my family, we are Muslims. But now I know why they come here. Because we in the mosque, we don't give anything. But you guys give bread. I love this. That's why my kids come here. And he had his half bread in his. He ended up getting saved because of Holy Communion. These ones giving us Muswaba rich bread. This is reveals the hearts of men. These guys are misers, they are mean. Okay, hold your, your bread. Say, Lord. As I take this bread, in the name of Jesus, my life will be new, will be healed, will be changed. It becomes medicine. The balm of Gilead, it will repair me, strengthen me, build me, transform me. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can eat. Religion says it's just a symbol. Shut up. You will not have to have done it. Everything Jesus did is life and power. This is not just a symbol. This is real power. And every disease you had, every pain you had, Every sickness, every disease, every sin, every, every bandage breaks today. Hold the cup, say, Lord, this is your life in me, your joy in me, your power in me. You are transforming me, you are saving me, you are healing me, you are cleansing me, you are energizing me. Whatever is wrong in me, Lord, heal it. In the name of Jesus. You know, people of God, the name of Jesus has power. A girl came here one Friday, tested the HIV positive. She came back last Friday, tested twice, negative. I don't know what you are believing, the God you believe is the one who is coming to you. I said the God you are believing is the one who is coming to you. So I believe in a God who paid a price for me. By his stripes I'm healed. His blood cleansed me. I am a child of God. I am a partaker and a receiver of his favor and mercy. No more sickness. No more barrenness. No more lack. No more debts. Jesus paid it all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can drink. Now shout glory seven times. Wogana glory and musambu. Glory. 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 Say I am a child of God. I receive blessings. I receive healing. I receive miracles. I am blessed. Money is coming to me. I will live longer. I am protected. In the name of Jesus, even when I drink a deadly thing, it will not hurt me. He will bless my bread and water. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am favored everywhere I go. Every time I come, I am surrounded. I am in Him. He's in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am the head and on the tail. No more calamities.
days. No more sorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. By September 16th, September, when we start, we close the, year, the sixth year of 77 and enter into the seventh year of 77. Uh, something is coming that will require you to have money to buy things that you will not have afforded in normal circumstances. Something is shifting. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this morning. And I've been having it for all these days. I'm praying for those. I'm praying for people who are crazy now. That by 16 September 2022, you'll have an account with over $10,000. So you're going to work, you're going to save, you're going to preserve, you're going to believe, you're going to protect, you're going to set aside, at least you have at least $10,000 on your account, in the name of Jesus. We're going to be as crazy as possible. We're going to believe the Bible more than ever before for the glory of God. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. You believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? So beginning tomorrow, money cometh, set the money aside. That is about 37 million Uganda shillings. 37 in two months and some few weeks. Believe God. Believe God. You shall be established. Believe the prophets. You will prosper. Lift your hand and say, I take it. I receive it. I have it. Glory. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and laugh. <laughs> Say, I'm surrounded, I'm protected, I'm guided. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Now, let's get our special seed. Let's give to the Lord. Let the Lord be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. If you've got your special seat, come on, just bring it to the Lord. And give it to the Lord by faith. And let God begin you on a journey of the blessings of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. I'm in this place, my God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. in this place Abba Father your seat today will take you to a level you've never known before Do you And you are guided and protected. Abba Father, you are
stand up on your feet, everybody. You are worthy of a praise. You Say, Father, this is my day. You are my God. You are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. I am your child. Now I know I have the blood and I have the bread. I am protected. I am in your body. You are my blood. I believe in you. Great things are going to happen. Saints shall glory. I am free. Glory, you are dead. I am blessed. I increase. I am added on. In Jesus' mighty name. God richly bless you. Please just go through here. Go through here. Others are people coming in through here. In Jesus' mighty name. You're going to have a great week. Finances, blessings are coming your way. Have your confidence in God. And the Lord will bless you. Doors are opening. In Jesus' name. We love you. God richly bless. In Jesus' mighty name. service let's rise up on our feet let's praise the king of kings he's here jesus we lift your name on high your name on high be lifted high jesus we lift your name on high your name on high be lifted high come on just clap your hands Good morning everybody, you're welcome for our service. Give God the loudest shout of praise and clap your hands, give him praise, he's worthy. Jesus we lift your name, your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus we lift your name on high, your name on high.
your name on high, be lifted high. You say, Jesus, let your name on high, your name on high. Jesus, I lift your name on high. Oh, let's go, come on. Be lifted high, be lifted high. Joy of the Lord is 
Nothing can stop this joy. We are winning every day. Sing it with a smile on your face. You say, nothing can stop this joy. We are winning every day. Say, nothing can stop my joy. Nothing can stop my joy. I am winning every day. Nothing can stop my joy. I am winning every day. One. Lift it up. Say, he's alive. He's alive. I am planted by the Lord, by the riverside. I am watered by the Lord. All my leaves are green. I'm a winner every day. Everywhere I go, I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. He is alive in us. Sing it, church. He is alive in us. Jesus is alive in us. We are winning every day. Lift up your voices and sing, church. He's alive in us. Louder. He's alive in us. Jesus is alive in us. We are winning every day. If you believe it, make a noise for Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. We're going to have a special song. Come 
sai, como sai, qual é su, qual é o sai, o qual é o homem sai, de na ona, oh, o homem sai. Just lift up your hands and let's welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. It is worthy of praise. The Holy Spirit is worthy of praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. You are welcome. We believe God is going to do something wonderful today in our lives. Welcome your family members. And we know God is going to touch you in a way he has never touched you before. As usual, we start with our tithe and offerings. So go ahead and give in Jesus' name. If you're writing your name and your phone number on that envelope the lord will do great things we were this week in chiboga the lord did wonderful things then yesterday we were in paida and uh, and uh, it was amazing incredible many many people's lives were transformed touched thousands of people gathered in Jesus name and we are grateful three quarters of those people gave their life to Jesus and today right now they are being baptized at this particular moment so it was really really amazing and we are grateful to God in Jesus name please go ahead and give the Lord will bless you there's a greater need for evangelism and I believe God is going to prosper us tomorrow is 4th of July it's an American Independence Day Independence Day America and uh, all of you from America we wish you a good independence but since it's Independence Day uh, tomorrow night I'll talk about 
what it really means to be independent. I pray that God will give you financial independence. He will give you mind independence. That the Lord will carry out things that he will be able to do for you. In Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus name. His goodness and mercy cannot fail. Fridays we saw wonderful miracles, signs and wonders. And we are so excited about what God is doing. It is my prayer that you live here not the same. In Jesus mighty name. I hope I'll be able to get you out of it quickly. I'm trying to catch up the time. So that the people of the midday service. Will not be able to. Um, crush on you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. In today's world, when things are uncertain, situations are happening, markets are not stable, and uh, businesses are slow, things are very expensive, and the drought is also taking a toll. You come to a point whereby you are saying, what next? What is the sure thing that I can do? Every problem you see in the world today is human inflicted. It's human mistakes. Whether sickness, whether disease, poverty, war, lack, you know, it's just human. Right down from the beginning of Adam and Eve, man made a mistake. And the mistake was he was not listening or hearing God. God was trying to communicate. He said, don't touch that one. Could you imagine that just touch people don't understand that God uses the, the power of our hands he uses your hand to bless you or to curse you and Adam touched God gave him something else to do he did the other thing that mistake has costed the human life but it shouldn't also hold us captive because God has already provided solutions so the God we serve and the God we believe in majority of us don't know him we don't know this God we serve we have no idea of how he functions of how he works we know he's a God he's good saves forgives but we have no idea of how he does stuff. And that's why we are limited in what we can receive. Let's begin with Genesis. God is dealing with man. Man is God's idea, by the way. Child of God, you are God's idea. You're not just a good idea. You are a God idea. Someone said, I'm God's idea. Oh, speak it out. You can do better than that. You, know? yeah, you, are, God, you are God idea. You are not just a good idea. You are a God idea. And God said to Adam, He said, I've placed you in the garden and I'll bless you. Our God is a blessing God. I want you to understand that. Our God gives blessings. He's a God who doesn't curse. Is a God who blesses. If there is a curse in your life, you have brought it on yourself. Because he clearly says, And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful. Multiply, replenish the earth. Subdue the nation. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. Over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. There's no curse in there. 
He first dealing with man. There was no curse. So when you deal with God, he's dealing with you on blessing basis. We bring curses on ourselves. Not God. Lift up your hand and say, My God. Is a blessing God and is gonna bless me. I'll be fruitful, I'll multiply, I'll replenish the earth. Do you know that the success of your life replenishes the earth? Do you know that your development replenishes the earth? Do you know that your great understanding and favor will replenish the earth? God is a God of blessing. So he doesn't understand when you spend time discussing curses. But man doesn't understand what God says, I'll bless you. Remember the blessings of the Lord make us rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. Let's look at Abraham. Abraham. How did he bless him? He said, I'll bless thee. I'll make a nation out of you. Child of God, once you connect to this God, you're going to build a city. I said, okay, you're going to build a nation. Did you hear what I just said? And I'll make thee of a great nation, and I'll bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Once God is in your life, that's the life you're going to have. Thank you for your last enthusiasm. This is the life you're going to have. That's what he said to Adam. That's what he said to Abraham. Even a sinner called Cain, who killed a brother, when he went in his presence, the Bible said, Cain left, knew his wife, bore a child, and Cain built a city. God does not believe in villages. Let me say it again. And I don't know where we get these ideas. When you read the word of God, they are cities. The Bible said, and Cain knew his wife, conceived and bore Enoch, and he, uh, he built a city. He built a city. When God comes to you, you build greatness. You build big things. When he came to Noah, Noah found grace. He built an ark. As a believer, as a child of God, you're going to build something bigger than your family is. It's because we don't know this God and we don't know what he says. You know, when I say I'll bless you, it's totally different from what God said I'll bless you. God's blessing makes no, you brings, make us rich and adds no sorrow. So when he blesses you, he will not bless a curse on you. The problem with us, we keep on talking about curses. Talk about demons. You look in the whole Bible and see these people who found grace, who found God. There is no mention of Satan. There is no mention of curses. Because once you get into this journey of this wonderful God, there is no curse in the neighborhood. I told you God believes in cities. That's his language. But because we don't know how he blesses. Oh boy. Look at what he did with, uh, with Jesus, his son. When Jesus was born. He never moved in villages. 
They took him there because there was crisis. And said, Joseph moved. And Joseph also went from the Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David. I don't know where we begin to get these words that this is a village and this is a city. Wherever you are as a child of God, they will be a city. Hallelujah. Because that's what he does. So when we talk about blessings, we have no idea of what we are talking. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. Now we don't understand the blessings of God. So we have to go to Deuteronomy 28 in order to understand what is it when God said I'll bless you. What does he say? What does he mean? And he said, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord your God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. God said, if you listen to my voice, I'll set you above all other nations. You're going to be a, the head. You're going to be above. That's what he talks about blessing you. By the way, let me tell you this. Your blessing has nothing to do with what goes on in Uganda. When God is going to bless you, he will not consult the bank of Uganda, neither what's happening in Russia, or what happened in the United States. America. Everybody God called and blessed, they were richer than the economy of the land. I'm sorry. Because it was not the land to pay them. It was not the land to determine how rich they become. It's not the policies of government that's going to make you rich. However good they are. Otherwise everybody in America will be a billionaire. No man is going to determine how rich or how poor you become. God is the one to determine that. And you. Now Let me say it again. You and God. Look at the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy in the first four letters of the word Deuteronomy. This is what the people understand. When I want to study your body, they call it anatomy. When you want to study other things, they use those very words. But here, the word is Deuteronomy. What happens, the word duet, D-E-U-T, duet, means two voices. This is two voices, which means you and God, you'll get the blessing. I'm sorry, I don't know whom I'm talking to. Your auntie, auntie, what happened in your family many years ago will not determine how rich you become. Because the children of Idi Amin will be having private jets. You know, listen to what I'm saying. Stop this game of saying, I'm not rich because my auntie did this. I'm not rich because my mama did this. No, the blood of Jesus came and washed away all that. If any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. I don't know whom I'm talking to in this house. I told the people in Zombe, Zombe, Zombe. in Paida e, yesterday. E Paida I said, if there's any witch here, you can bewitch me. Tandika, tandika 
Your witchcraft will not stop me from being rich. Today, Uganda government, government may Uganda become crazy, like the city of Babylon, and they set up religion, and they say we don't want Christianity. It has never happened before. We don't want these Balokole churches. They can do it. That will not stop me from being rich or from worshiping my God. Because God does not use a nation to bless you. God uses you to bless a nation. In fact, he says, you will lend nations and you never borrow. So when God said, I'll bless you, he's looking for you as a person to use you for his glory. So you're not going to determine because you kick me out of my place of work. Because you are jealousy of me. The more they became jealous of Joseph, Joseph became a prime minister. Don't you understand the word of God? Don't you understand the Bible? What is it that you don't understand? The more they oppressed them, the more they multiplied. What is it that you don't understand? Exodus chapter 2. He said, The more they oppressed them, the more they multiplied. Exodus 1 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Your enemy is about to be grieved. Child of God, believers, we better believe God. Sit down. The miracle of Uganda through COVID is not because of vaccination, it's not because of lockdown. Because of lockdown. Every nation had lockdown. It was because we turned to God even before COVID started. Before we had a single person, I was at State House, we were praying. We were praying for the country. We prayed on Friday, Sunday they found one victim of COVID. It wasn't medicine because we had nothing. We does not hospitals because they are, they, they, you know our hospitals. God simply put a favor on us. He put a cover on Uganda. Someone who believes the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you are going to become richer than the riches. It's because we don't understand God. Sit down, please. It's because we don't understand this God. We don't understand this God. That whatever he says, it will do. Listen, he spoke to Adam. And Adam, I don't know what was wrong with them. They did not believe God. They believed the devil. They believed the devil. Tell the person next to you, what's wrong with you? Why don't you believe God? Why do you believe the devil? Why are you quick in believing someone who has not made you? I'm so surprised people believe in social media. They believe all kinds of stuff. Are you crazy? You don't believe the Bible. But you believe something else. I don't believe the devil. The security is Satan. And they did what they said. You see, believing is not to say. Believing is not just to look. Believing is in doing.
If you want to see a believer, a believer is the doer. A believer is the doer. And that's why sometimes we say we are believers. But what we do is different. Because if I do, he blesses the work of my hand. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens to give thee rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. That's 12. Let's go to verse 2, please. Deuteronomy. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken into the voice of the Lord. These blessings shall come on you. Which means they are not in the area, they are not in the country. They are just going to come. They are not where you are, they are going to come. And I don't care where they come from. But they are going to come. Glory to God. Lift your hands, say they're gonna come. Gajige nakuja. Gamba jija. Gajija. And he said they they will come on you. Jija kuja kumulambo. No muzimu we gudja ne gukwa tomu. Demon can get hold of a person. Ne mu kisabwe gubera. That's the blessing. Gudja ne guku kuata. Grabs hold of you. Ata Bible ye gambi. Bible says. Ata ne guku yisa. And it will overtake you. Which means guku wane kubo jola ga. It gives you direction. Glory to God. It gives you direction. The blessing come on you and overtake you. Even though it has overtaken you, you are going to take this path and there will be Hate. 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 You're gonna find curses, you're gonna find blessings only. Glory to God. Glory to God. Then he says, Blessed shall thou be in the city and shall be blessed in the field. God doesn't talk about villages because he knows once you're blessed in a city and you are blessed in the village, in the field, that field is going to become a city. I was flying to pa, what? Paida. Payida. Actually, they told me it's not Payida, it's, it's Payuda. Payuda. Payuda means the grabbers. Abawambi. Abawambi. Abetwalida. Abetwalida. Abediza. And I said, what did you take? They said, we took a kingdom. There was a kingdom from, it, it was part of Alua and Congo. They pulled it and brought it to a place called Payuda. And I said, that's exactly. We are grabbers. We are going to pull a blessing from heaven and bring them here. I don't know what I'm speaking to Grab blessings from heaven to your house. Whatsoever they are to your house. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. That's what happened to the farm. Right now, there's a drought is everywhere. Everybody is crying. But I know how my God works. I have the keys to bind and to lose. And God loves me. And I'm his servant. I'm his ambassador. I cannot live without rain. Whether there's no rain in Uganda, there's rain at my farm. Glory. God. You can't condition me when I have God.
the difference between you and other people is going to be in what God does through you. There are people who waste their time and said, I'm not like those people. What do you mean you're not like those people? What do you mean? They have a nose like you. They have a head like you. They have legs like you. You have five fingers, five fingers. So what are you saying? You, 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 you're not different. You live and die. What do you mean you're not like them? The difference is not in your looks. The difference is in your works. You didn't hear what I said. The difference is not in your looks. The difference is in your works. Blessed thou be in the city, shall be thou in the field. Blessed shall thou be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle. God is consistent. He always talks about fruit, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of this. The increase of thy kind and the flock of thy sheep. Which means when God deals with you and you understand who he is, he makes you self-sufficient. You don't have to depend the other religion that, that butchers your beef. You can butcher it for yourself. Everybody God has ever dealt with, they are self sufficient. Lift up your hand. Say the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and He adds no sorrow to these blessings. Somebody clap your hands with Jesus. Go ahead. Blessed are thy be thy basket and thy store. Saints, if you talk to a Muganda and said a basket, what do you understand is a, a, a chibbo. These, these baskets where you put I didn't bring here. on Kwanjulas. When you talk to people who pick up tea, this is what they use. They wear this one on their head and they go and pick up tea. If you talk to Hebrews, if you talk to Hebrews, a basket must be able to carry a human being and hide him. The spies of Israel were put in a basket and they were saved. Apostle Paul and others when they wanted to kill them they put them in a basket. The Bible said the word of God has been made of none effect because of your tradition. When you hear God said, I'm blessing you, you are thinking about a reconditioned car. You are thinking about a two bedroom house. A job, Omulimu. a husband, Omwami. and three kids. You have no idea of when God said, I have blessed you. You look at Job chapter 1, that's when you begin to believe that's why God starts. 7,000 sheep. And I, I, don't, I don't have uh, 
The young man who filmed our ship recently. They are not yet a thousand. But I looked at them and there were so many. Seven thousand. Each one of them eats 12 kilograms of grass a day. Do you know how big the land was? The people who take care of those sheep, sharing them. In your mind, because you know 7,000 shillings, you think these were 7,000 shillings. If these were cars, 3,000 cars. Those are camel. Or pick up trucks. Or fuso trucks. Three thousand. Three thousand. If it was in this day, he had five hundred she ashes. Those will be Mercedes Benz or, 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 or Lincoln or Cadillac. Okay, those are sheep. In the Gazi, so Gazia. Put it here. Uh huh. They don't need a thousand. But think about this. Bazam Wezu. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Huh? So when God starts talking about blessing, what are you talking about? That's why our tradition has destroyed us. Because what you call rich, in the eyes of God, they are poor. Revelation chapter. He said, you think yourself you are rich, you are poor. Revelation chapter 2, I think, or chapter 1, chapter 2. He said, you think you are rich, you are poor. Five hundred exotic cars, Lamborghinis. Lamborghini, the Bugatti, become a bit So what does he say? Chicha Agamba. Who is this God? Katondo no yani. He never stops amazing me. This, if you go in that container, two containers are full of crutches. Seventy-seven. This has just begun this year. Zino zamu akabuno. Zino jamu akabuno. This. Zino buno bugari ne migo. Someone comes in the service, sits there, sits there, worship there, pray there, sit down there. They worship the sea, and then you make prayers. And in seconds, someone is healed. Who is this God? Who is this God? People of God, just the part of him which blesses. Revelation 3.17 Because thou sayest, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou is wretched and miserable and poor, blind and naked. Oh my God. Now, listen to this. He said he will bless your basket. In fact, today I'm praying that God will make you 
your basket will be as big or tall as your size. Amen. 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 If they make coffins for you which are your size, may God create a basket for your height where you can keep your money. In fact, the lady of, of Zarephah, she had a bell. A bell. Pipa full of wheat and she was a widow in her house she used to keep in barrels a widow because she looked she had barrels of oil you buy two kilos you are budgeting you are living on a budget the day you buy a sack of rice everybody begins to wonder what's going on with you your kids come dancing mommy has brought a bag a a a barrel of wheat flour and barrels of oil a widow That's why Apostle Paul said, I may know him. And yet, he knew him. He met on the road to Damascus. He knew him. But here he's begging. I want to know him more. And the power of his resurrection. Because I thought I knew him, I don't know him. This God. Let me show you how he works. One of the promises, one of the principles. You want to get it? You want to know him? You're going to know it? One of it, because he loves you, and he wants to change your life. He has put up a system out of your mistakes and my mistakes. I told you the problem we have here on this earth is self inflicted. All these problems, self inflicted. Mistakes man do. So I stop blaming man. I realize that all of us are simply making mistakes. A man. About six, seven months ago, nine months ago, had me preach about maize. And he believed he's an unbeliever. But he told the banker, the bank in the same bank, he said, That man, the program was, he said, That man speaks things that are going to happen. That man. He said, You know what I did? I rented stores. And I've put there 5,000 metric tons of maize. When it was at 900 shillings. A he said, The Kenya company has come and bought all my maize at 2,000 shillings. He has ended up making 5.5 or 5 something billion shillings in nine months. When everybody is making a loss, he's a non-believer. He doesn't have stores. He doesn't grow maize. He simply understood what to do. Borrowed money from the bank, bought the maize. Now, out of that profit, out of that sale, he made 1.5 million US dollars in nine months. He's a non-believer. Now, people here in the Miracle Center have heard me talk about maize for a long time. It's 
not only hearing, it's about doing. Do this. Do this, you'll prosper. Do this. That's why God said, do this. Choose ye this day. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. Don't do this. It's about doing. Not hearing. When Adam sinned, Adam, God introduced a system, or a, a way, or something to do that can cause you to recover, be restored, be empowered, and not die, so that you may live long enough to fulfill the purposes of God in your life. Because he said to Adam, the day you do touch that tree, you will eat. The day you do eat it, you will die. So Adam was going to die. And God introduced something. He killed an animal. He killed an animal. And the blood was shed. And his body covered him. He took the skin, part of the body. So God introduced a long time ago. Blood and body. Blood and body. Blood is liquid. Body is substance. So he introduced two things. Blood is liquefied. Blood is, I mean, meat is our skin or whatever it is, or bread is tangible, touchable. It's a material. So he introduced that. That if man is going to get out of this, this is what he needs to use. So he killed an animal, blood. And he used his skin, body. And Jesus said, this is my body. And this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. He would have said, go to Jerusalem to remember me. Go where I was buried to remember me. Go and do whatever, wear like a Jew. No, he said, take the bread and take the blood. Or wine. Wine represents the blood. And the bread represents the body. Blood and body. Blood and body. Okay, let's go fast. Noah found grace. Grace is of Jesus Christ. Grace is unmerited favor. Which means grace is Jesus dying on the cross. For by grace he has saved through faith and not of yourself, but it's the gift of God. So grace, how did Jesus die for us? He gave up his blood and he gave up his body. So even Noah, to build an ark, he had the blood and the body. Those who believe in Holy Communion, Holy Communion, the bread and the blood, oh, the body God. and the blood. They are going to build things you have never known before. Abraham, Genesis 14. Melchizedek, a priest of the Most High, a type of Jesus, who has no beginning or end, meets Abraham in verse 18, and he gave him bread and wine, because he was going to become the father of all believers. Why does he give him bread and wine? Because that's the policy, that is a practice. That is the solution God has now introduced to protect you until you have fulfilled the days of your life on earth. 
What is going to shield you from death? What is going to shield you from destruction? From dying young, dying in accident, getting sick from nowhere, demons killing you. It is the wine and the bread. It is the blood and the body. Abraham would have died. He went through battles. He came out strong. Even at the age of 190, they were able to produce Isaac. And Sarah lived 127. She delivered, she delivered the boy at the age of 90. She died 130. So she was there watching her son for 37 years since, since he was born and grew him and built a tent and she kept until she died so that Isaac when he married he will have a house some of you are dying before your children are out of Nazareth school you are not going to die there is a blood and there is a body Holy Communion is not just a religious sacrament religion trivializes things the simple is, 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 is just it's is just it's just a symbol no why did Jesus after did everything he did that he's about to go to heaven and he's about to die for you he took the bread and he took the wine and he said they had already finished eating he said this is my body this is my blood do this in remembrance of me because when you remember Jesus you stop dying when you remember Jesus ah, you're not hearing what I'm saying Lazarus had died he was in the grave they buried him hey, they buried Lazarus in the grave he was rotten and he was smelling when Jesus came and called him Lazarus remembered. Lazarus. He remembered the voice. And he came out. It doesn't matter how smelly you are. It doesn't matter how dead you are. Where the blood has applied. Where the body of Christ has applied. You will come out of the grave. You will come out of your poverty. You will come out of your sickness. You will come out of your sin. Somebody said, I'm coming out. Sit down. And he gave him bread and the children of Israel in the wilderness. You know what God gave them? What preserved them? The Bible said there was no barren among them. There was no lamb. There was no feeble. Child of God. Their clothes were not tearing. Their shoes were not breaking. Do you know why? Everybody has talked about things. No. In the morning, he gave them bread. In the evening, he gave them blood. The quails gave the blood. The morning, it was the man who gave them the bread. And they ate it daily. Daily. The bread and the blood. Somebody said bread. Bread. And the blood. And the blood. The body. And the blood. I'm telling you, you're gonna be shielded. You're gonna be protected. Accidents will not hurt you. Beach doctors will not affect you. Economic problems will not even come your house. Sit down. That's why Jesus said, yes, when they ask him, Lord, teach us how to pray. Do you know what he told them? Pray. Give us this day our daily preservative. Preservative. Our protection.
The Bible said, Bible He, ye, Maroshete Karebo, He will bless our bread and our waters, and He will remove sickness from us. Exodus 23, 25. And he shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I, he will take sickness away from thy midst. He said once you have the bread and you have the water. Hello. Even when you don't have the juice. Even when you don't have anything. If you have the water and you have the bread. He will come and take away sickness away from your midst. Go right on God. Stay seated. And then come tomorrow. Whining with a boil. <laughs> Sit down. Lift your hands. Sit down. Lift your hands. Sit down. Lift your hands. The Acts. The Bible said in Acts chapter 20, verse 20. He said they moved from house to house, breaking bread. No, you didn't hear it just said. And now I have kept back nothing. When he gave them this, he kept nothing. That I was pro profitable unto you, which is profitable to you. This is profitable to you to take Holy Communion on a daily basis. My daughter is alive today because of Holy Communion. He said, Now I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. And the Bible said there's another, and they kept from house to house and breaking bread. They moved from house to house breaking bread. The men to Emma was at backslidden. But when they brought the bread, revelation came. Once you understand what Jesus did for you, the pain he took on, the saturnine why he weeps, the suffering, the Bible says he who was rich became poor, not spiritually, physically, so that you will become rich, not spiritually, but physically lift up your hand when he came he jump seven times say I'm going to be rich because the blessing of the Lord maketh rich Sit down. Tell the pastor next to you. He said, My God is a blessing God. He's a loving God. He's a redeeming God. He has given me the blood and his body. Stop wasting my time. I'm going to think about these things. What does the blood mean? What does the bread mean? This is enough for me. Abraham got it and he became victorious. Noah got it. He became powerful. The apostles got it. They became anointed. In Jesus' name. Child of God, next week I'm going to teach you. And you need to be here. How to get the anointing to permanently remove your enemy from their position and you take it. Whoever comes out on you, whoever attacks you, he has come to surrender their land and their money and their position. Tell the person next to you, they warned you. He said, you've been warned. 
touch. Ah, ah, you are very weak. Come on, speak up. You get another man. Tell the person next to you. You have been warned. Touch not my anointed one. Now you are about to see. You don't understand it. Let me give you a sneak preview of next Sunday. So chest David everywhere. David was not able to, rip, to take out Saul. But the day he ate the bread of the priests that's when Saul died. Holy communion is not a joke. Holy communion is not a joke. So could not even get a hand on stone David. Saul on the David in the world, yeah, I'm going to put a I know you've been victorious, you've, you've defeated other things. But when you start taking holy communion, I said, when you start taking holy communion, whatever comes your way, you are about to possess. Whatever comes against you, you are about to rule over. Sit down. Don't miss Sunday. Don't miss next Sunday. There is an anointing. This is what Jesus said. He said, Those who eat my flesh, my body, and drink my blood, I am in them, and they are in me. You are about to walk on water, you. You are about to do the impossible. Your children are going to get straight A's. Your children are going to graduate. You are going to buy a helicopter. You are going to buy a jet. You are going to make money than ever before. Somebody jump seven times, glory. John chapter 6 and verse 56. John 6, verse 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. You are about to become the transport of Jesus. You are about to transport the Messiah. And also Jesus is about to transport you. You are about to go to nations. You enter boardrooms you've never entered. You are about to handle money you have never had. Somebody shall glory. That's why before he died and after resurrection he was using the bread. He is the bread that came from heaven. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do you know why these Catholic priests and these reverends live longer? Those people don't pray as you pray. Huh? Hmm? Do you know what has preserved them? Because in every Misa they make, in every service they do, they serve Holy Communion. Those guys are preserved because of Holy Communion. Holy communion. 
because they don't fast, they, they see, don't pray, they, they, don't, they don't do nothing, they, they don't, don't chase devils. devils. Holy communion. It will increase the wisdom of your children. It will turn the situation around. It will protect you. Even when you drink deadly poison. Or been by a serpent. It will not hurt you. Raise your hand. Say, give me the blood. Give me the body. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Come on, ministers, ashes. Distribute the Holy Communion. Lens. In Jesus' name. He said, This is my body. Do you know that he calls you his body? He's going to dwell in us. You're going to see the body of Christ creating things that have never been created before. Through God's principles, you are going to achieve levels you've never achieved before. Child of God, God is going to prosper you, bless you, increase you. You are different from everybody else. Not because of what you say, but what you are about to do. Come on, ministers, hurry up. He is the bread from heaven. Many things you are on us, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living one. Bread from heaven came down from heaven. Many things you are on us, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living God. I remember when we were up there at Kabusu, we never took holy communion this kind. These ashes are very mean. Jesus took the bread. Yes, and blessed it and broke it. For them they give you this stuff. For what? This reveals the hearts of people. I don't know how, do you, how you get the whole loaf and you cut it into I don't understand. In those days, we never did that. We took loaves of bread, boxes and boxes, and we used these, these uh, plastic mugs. Fill it with quencher or a bina. And people go to bread and you break what you can eat and you pass it on the Muslim man came looking for his family. They had been coming to church. So when he came to look for them in the church, he found people were breaking bread. And he sat. They gave him a loaf, he kept it. And a mug, he kept it. So he started breaking before he even started taking what he putting in the loaf. After the service, he says, I want to talk to you. He you know, we are Muslim, but my children keep on coming. Now I know why. Because for us in the mosque, we don't eat anything. They don't give us anything. 
Okay, let them keep on coming. At least they can get some bread. Because those days it was the hunger was everywhere in the 1980s. We are just coming out of war. That man is, is in charge. And those children born again, three of his kids are abroad. He's no longer crying for bread. Holy communion saved him. Holy communion saved him. These Muswaba rich sizes. It will just make you mad. But nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, stand up on your feet. Lift the bread. Have you received the Holy Communion? If you haven't received, put up your hand. This is the body of Christ which was broken for you. No disease. No calamities. No witchcraft. No attack of the enemy. is going to break your body. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, you're going to keep my body. You are the balm of Gilead. You're going to strengthen me. You're going to flush me out. Everything that is wrong in my system, in my body, in my mind, I now trust in the blood of Jesus. I now trust in the word of God. I now trust in the blood of Jesus and his body. I am preserved. I am protected. I am filled. Blessings are coming. Healing is coming. Life is coming. I am not going to be sick. I will not die before my time. I will fulfill all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I trust in you, Lord. You diseases, you sickness, you pain, you suffering. Get out of my body. In the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. What's wrong with you, man? Between these two ladies, you're standing there. What is your problem? You had an accident. Huh? I got an accident. I broke my leg last year. Step here. So you fractured your leg. This this femur got the broken across and cracked. Just walk here. Tambula. Bread from heaven came down from glory. Many things you are on us, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living God, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Many things you are on us, a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living God. Regoshi parashete kereboshete. Many things you are on us, a holy king. A carpenter, you are the living God. Awesome Luda, gentle redeemer. 
believing what a holy regosa prador shete Lord give him a brand new leg mokama mwoku guluku pia give him a brand new leg mwoku guluku pia chen saba everybody eat your bread kuli mtu yomu gati guo Something is happening to you, man. Something is happening, saints. You are the lead.
Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Whatever was broken in your life, the Lord is putting it together. Whatever has been not in your life, the Lord is putting it there. His power, by His power, by His power. Oh, you're gonna know our God by the power of His resurrection. In the name of Jesus, oh, your business is coming back. Your marriage is coming back. Your family is coming back. Your finances are coming back. Your miracles are coming back. Your joy is coming back. Your power is coming back. Your influence is coming back. Glory, hallelujah. Pastor Musumba, I've grabbed Mbase. I'm a grabber. Mbase. I've grabbed Mbase. this microphone Mbase. from this office. Mbase. Jesus' his name. Mbase. Pastor Musumba. I remind you one thing. When you were outside there, I was the second person. To sow a seed of laying papers. I spent over 50 million shillings. Pastor, as if that's not enough, when God spoke to you to sow mattresses, I don't know how much money I spent a full week when I was buying new mattresses and sowing. The third thing, Pastor, Musumba. I said, if God, you can help me. I want to lay papers everywhere where there are no papers. And my cost at that time, I had I had budgeted 1.5 billion shillings. The enemy attacked me. I was in the hospital in Mengo. Several of the pastors here visited me. Papa Chris, Musumba Chris, Pastor Chris, Musumba Chris, Pastor Eddie, Musumba Ruama, and others. They, they visited me and prayed for me. As this laying of papers has been ongoing, I've been saying in my heart, Lord, Mukama. During that season, I might have spent over 100 million shillings. My personal money, physical money, and sowing here. Then I said, God, you left me with life. Even if the other community joined in the laying of papers project. And I remind you on the pulpit, I said, whoever wants to join me, join me. They never joined me. When God talked to you and you talk to them, they join. But I said, even if they have done that, my budget was... 1.5 billion to do papers laying in this place. Allow me do that more abundantly. But in here, this is my first day. I think when you have spiritual identified me, though you heard about me, even one time I came here and said, oh, you man, you have started working. A lot of my businesses were shattered. Me who used to talk in terms of a sense of Nine zeros. That's the level I'd come to. The devil has reduced me 
back to the normal zeros Sutani Nancy which is not okay now when you were pronouncing your businesses are business is your what and what there are certain things which I can't say on the microphone pastor you this time give me an audience on a special note and I have a meeting with you and me a request but in here I have recovered when you were saying when you are saying that jump seven times do you know how I was jumping I was jumping like this one is the normal leg so I would do seven times and I couldn't even make it but in here when you are saying your strength your business your money your what your what I kept on gaining the guts. Seven times. Oh my God. My God. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. So what happens, Pastor? Exactly this is what happened. This bro, this former bone of mine. Completely uh, cracked. Yeah, and broken across all around then it cracked it yeah, broke and cracked now the situation I've still been having is an element of paralysis in my foot but I want to end like this when someone does something to God like what I did that I've told you that I did in a lot of voices against me rose including even the people from here who I know and have ever supported them financially that please if something does something to God don't attack and you know the situation I'm in now I used to drive cars people say people say he used to see they were mocking me but our God is at work here and he works perfectly don't attack don't read I sold money. You say why I have I'm still doing it. I have things to sort out. I got who has done this miracle. I can jump this way. I can jump this way. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Get your mic, man. Quarter Kazinda Roko. Have this. What? You are taking it home. And the bread. This is the beginning. This very hour. The power of God. To return ten times. What you had. And everybody will realize. That there is power in the blood. There is power in the body of Christ. And I will see you. I will see you. I thank all the ministers here. They have loved me. And they pray for me. But today. My wife loved me. He said that. When he used to sit behind. Minister. She's wearing a white 
trousers. In this church, come out to lay and sit in your position. That's why I to pick me up. Glory to God for that lady minister. <laughs> Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. <laughs> Wow, that's when he was in the hospital. My God. No, you know, I saw something very like a hand of Jesus between those two ladies touching that man. And where I am, I could not know who he was. I could, I'm blinded with his lights. So I couldn't see very well who it was. And I said, what's wrong with you? Sit down. Let's get hold of our seed. For your family, your, your, your new family beginning. Yo, Get your seed. Go. And listen, the Lord told me yangambie, in the first service, service ya sose, that from today ero, up to the 16th, is baka, it 18th, 16th of September, September mokaga, is two and a half months to 77 days of glory. When we come out of the sixth year into mkaka, the seventh year, to declare upon you because something is happening, you are about to buy things with little money no, that you will not have afforded, even if you had worked for a hundred years. So the Lord told me to declare this to you that from today, tomorrow, up to the 16th, set aside, believe God, so that you raise for yourself, you save money for yourself, to the tune of over $10,000. Something is happening. Something is happening. I believe you will have it on your account in account the name of Jesus. So go to work. Go to pray. Go to believe. God is going to provide it. May he teach you how to save. May he teach you how to believe. Somebody, you remember the word of God God gave us about the... Um, Bringing your tithe in a, in, in a, in a pillow. Or your seed in a pillow. I pray that in the name of Jesus, God will give you a basket in which you can fit in and be covered and all of it will be your money. Amen. May God give you a whole barrel of money. So somebody believed God and brought that 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 that, uh, that pillow full of money. And then also another person in, in Los Angeles. She also sent her seed in a pillow. People of God, may God give you money and your tithe will be a pillow of money. Whoever stood up, you can take it in Jesus' name. I declare there will be no lack. I declare there will be no lack. In Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and give. The Lord is good. The Lord is great. We shall deal with that witchcraft in the last service. In Jesus' mighty name. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is, good. God is great. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. May God bless you and make you a billion In Jesus' mind. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord.
gentle redeemer God with us a living truth what a friend we have in you you are the living God Feet, everybody. Declare these words with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not be the same again. You are turning my situation around. You are blessing me. You are increasing me. You are adding to me. And you are favoring me. In the name of Jesus, my life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. All the youths in a few minutes, like five minutes, you meet in the tent there. And uh, Robert Jr. wants to talk to you. And God will do great and mighty things. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. The Lord will do great and mighty things. He will establish his plan. And he will carry out great things. In Jesus' name. Okay, you can go through here. Or through here. In Jesus' mighty name. God reach the blessed. He is a wonderful God.
You can let the people come in. In Jesus' mighty name. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Come on, join us, clap your hands, everybody, come on. You're welcome in the service. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's give praises to Jesus. He's worthy of it all. Let's sing together. Jesus, we lift your name. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Yeah.
praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are glad you are here today. Good afternoon. Welcome to Miracle Center. If this is your first time to be here, we welcome you and we are glad you came. God has a miracle for you and your name is written on it. We welcome your family with you and we know God is going to do great and mighty things. You may be seated. What a mighty God we serve. Let's go ahead and give our tithe and offerings to the Lord as we worship Him, as we come before Him, for He will do great and mighty things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, tomorrow is American Independence Day. We congratulate America for their independence. But also we are going to start a series of prayer to pray for your liberty. God talks more about liberty than he talks about independence. So we are going to talk about your liberty in finances, your liberty in thinking, your liberty in planning, your liberty in a lot of stuff. Because it's very, very important that you get your liberty. Yeah, Christ set us for liberty. What is hindering you? What is stopping you from being what you're supposed to become? Those of you watching by television, you can go on Airtel Cord and give your tithe and offerings, Momo Pay, uh, MTN Cord, and uh, M-Pesa in Kenya, and PayPal. So you can use your email or your, your e-business to plant your seeds. I believe that God is going to help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and give. You have called that person out in Jesus' name. God is awesome. We want also to welcome Sam Karenga from Chigali, Rwanda. Wherever you are, you can stand up. Thank you for coming in Jesus' name. Pastor Veronica. You are also highly welcome. Thank you for coming to worship with us. And many, many others who are here, the Lord will do great and mighty things. Every day at 6 p.m., we are praying. We are praying every day. Don't miss our Wednesday. Also, don't miss our Friday. The Lord keep on doing great things. On Thursday, we were in Kapeche, in Chiboga. The Lord did great things. Yesterday, we were all the way to um, Paida. And uh, I realized it's called as Payuda. And um, it means the land of the grabber. The crowd was incredible. Masses, masses, masses. The Lord healed so many people. We dedicated the Miracle Center Church since it started by that wonderful mother. And uh, the Lord is doing great things. I saw things and I learned. I've come to realize because the, the founder of the church, she came to me when I was just beginning ministry, 1983. So that was about 40 years ago. And, um, and God has done wonderful things in her family. She said, there is an anointing in this place. We were still up there in 1983 when she came. And uh, she said, let's start a church in Paida. And... Um, we dedicated it uh, on Saturday, and uh, all government officials were there, ministers, and um, MPs. It was really amazing to see what the Lord has done with this lady. And, um, and, and you know what was surprising for me? That that is the Archbishop of the 
of the, uh, the bishop of the Anglican Church. And uh, the pastor lady is the mother of that bishop. She has eight children. Eight children. The second born, the first born, is Uganda Deputy Ambassador in Canada. The second born is the Bishop of uh, Zombe. That one is the last born. Is the pastor. The other one is the Bishop in the Anglican Church. Uh, son, another son is one of the secretary of the president. One family, I mean, family. They, they literally done a great work. And the bishop was there, bishop and the brother, and the sisters. And they said, that's the church we are dedicating. They gave the land, and they built the church. And I realize Zombe is very good in raising gods. I mean, Zombe. you have never seen a beautiful place. I've been to Kisoro, very beautiful. Warunji. But Paida, Zombe, Zombe, it's like Switzerland. Switzerland. The place is so beautiful. It's, it's on the Lake Albert. The breeze is like you've never seen. So we gave them a seed of five million to start a farm of God so that they can be able to do a wonderful thing. But the lady said, this anointing to raise such children came from Miracle Center. Now, some of you, you did not realize that the anointing to take your children to a higher level is right here. Hey. You are on the altar. Your children are going to be great. And, and I, I told that bishop, bishop Namugambi, that he's going to become a bishop of Church of Uganda. You watch and wait. Because there is an anointing of a praying mother. And today, the Lord is unlocking that anointing for you and your family. That lady came and she used to grab me, my hand. She said, let's go, let's go. 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 Let's go to Paida. I thought Paida was, was here. It's on the board of Congo. And Uganda. And... Um, but the Lord is amazing. That remotest part now has a church of miracle centers. Well. But masses of people came. Masses of people came. And the Lord did great things. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we are grateful to the Holy Spirit. Three quarters of those people gave their life to Jesus. And they've been just dis baptized this morning. Pastor David is doing a great, great work. Come on, clap your hands for Pastor Makoko. And, um, and the Lord is good. Amen and amen, amen. and amen. amen. Uh, after the service, the youth, uh, Robert Jr. will meet you in the tent. And we believe God is going to do great things. The world today is going through tough times. The situation around the world is not good. And um, people are struggling to pay their bills. People are working at home. They can't afford transportation. The prices keep on rising. In Uganda right now, petrol or diesel is over 6,000. That tells you, and, and it's just the beginning. And every problem man faces is humanly engineered. It's our mistake. Right down from Adam, we've made serious mistakes. Intended or non-intended. And they have greater repercussions. Yet we have a God 
and we have not really find out who is this God we believe in. Majority of the believers, they don't know him. What, what will shock, shock you is Apostle Paul himself. He says, may I know him and the power of his resurrection. So if Apostle Paul, the man who saw Jesus, who went to the second and third heaven, can come out with such a scripture, Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Then what about me? What about you? Do you really know the God you worship? Do you know his ability and his power? You see, man has has confused us with their interpretation with their knowledge of God and they have equated God to a man or a man's system and so we also follow them because we think maybe they really know what they're talking about our God is a God who blesses people Everybody who has ever come to him. In God there's no curses. We take ourselves to the curse area. Let me take you to the first dealing of God with man. Briefly in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. God is speaking to Adam. He has made a man in his own image. And God blessed them. After creating them, he didn't cast them. He didn't say your nose is not right. He didn't say your feet is crooked. The first thing he did, he blessed them. And God said, this is how God blesses. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. That's the blessing God gave man. Multiplication is very revealing you can't multiply zero by a million and get a billion so by saying be fruitful be multiplied it means there is something god put in man that is worth multiplying there is something inside of you that god is going to multiply So he blessed man. Now, what happened? When Cain came to him, please take that person outside. He will, when we pray for the sick, he will bring him back. Because this is very crucial. I want you to hear this. Because this will turn your life around. It's a series that's going to take us for at least a month. But when we are done, the series is called The Way of God. For you to recover and become what God wants you to become. Or oh, you call it The Secret of God. Success. The secret of God's success. You are going to be successful. So he deals with Cain. Cain had sinned. Killed a brother. But amazingly, when he came from the presence of God, he went and built a city. Because God does not know village. He doesn't talk about village. He's a God of a city. And fields. You are either in a city or you are in a field. 
the village is man's creation and today he's going to give you the power and the revelation to turn your village into a city the bible says when Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he builded a city builded a city this is a man who had blood on his hands but came in the presence of God and he was the first one to build a city. Because in God there's no village. There's no village life. There is only city life. He built a city. What about his son Jesus? So that you may understand the mind of God. The tradition of men have made the word God of none effect. The Bible said, and Joseph came out of Nazareth. The city out of the city of Nazareth from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David so he moved out of a city and went to another city to deliver Jesus child of God I rebuke that demon of village life to get out of your life we are city builders and in your village, you're going to build a city. Lift your hand and say, I'll build a city. Lift your hand and say, I'll build a city. And Philip went to the city of Samaria. God talks about city. But, but Cain built a city when there were no blueprint of how you build a city. Because when God blesses you, listen to this. We often think we need a nation to change us. So we are professional migrants. Because you believe this country, I will not succeed in this country. That's not how God works. God is looking for a man who can stand in the gap. And that is the man who will build a nation. It's not the nation building you. It is you going to build a nation. Because that's what he said to Abraham. He said, I'll make you a nation. Child of God, it doesn't matter. In the days of Babylon, a king became crazy. Lifted an, an idol in Adulam. In the valley of Adulam. And he commanded everybody to bow down and worship. Even in Uganda today, someone can come crazy. And, and, and they say, we no longer want Christianity. We no longer want the Bible. We're going to worship our Chwezi, our Mayembe, our Bitega, our Lubare. What will you do? You run away? No. In the midst, you become a Daniel. You become a Daniel. A slave became a governor. Because it's not Babylon to make Daniel. Daniel was the one to make Babylon. Many of us are looking to Uganda to help us. Uganda, Uganda to build me. Government, Uganda. Build, me. Government build me. No, you are the one Where? to lend to nations. And you will never borrow. Because we don't know our God and we don't know how he was and we don't know how powerful he is. We are, we, are, we are depending on the clan to make you. No, the clan won't make you. Even the family will not make you. You are here to make the family great. When this woman pastor in Paida came, I was young, I was about 1920. She said, I want you to be my spiritual father. I didn't know what that meant. 
teach the She said, There is an anointing I've seen on you. In overnight. That's what I want for my children. The bishop told me, He said, We were young when Mama brought us and you laid hands on us. The bishop of Anglican Church, He said, We were young and you said, We shall be great. Now I'm a bishop. My brother is a pastor. The other one is ambassador. Now you have an anointing in the house, but you don't know how powerful that anointing is. You keep on moving from place to place. Place to place, you are looking for solutions. While the anointing is making people ambassadors, is making people judges, is making people... Okay, you don't want to clap your hands, you go ahead. Sit down. Our God is a God who blesses. And everybody who came in touch with him never talked about the devil again. Never talked about curses. Never. Because the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. Child of God, when God starts blessing you, there's no room why are you talking about the sorrow, about the curses, about what did somebody wrong, about what God on. You concentrate on the blessing because the blessing of the Lord will come on you and will overtake you. But before it comes on you or before it overtakes you, you're already back into curses. Yes. Let me tell you, no matter what they did, no matter what they are doing, whether they are bewitching you or they are saying what, they have no power to determine what's going to work in your life. In order for you to understand how God works, from the very beginning, let's understand the way his ways. His ways. He's a God of blessing. He's a God of blessing. Period. Lift your hand and say, My God is a God of blessing. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say the God I serve, the God I believe in, is the God of blessing. No curses, no demons, nothing. My God is a God of blessing, somebody. Now, in order for you to understand what do we mean by a blessing, sit down, please. What do we mean by blessing? In order to understand this, you have to understand that there's a difference between you and God. What you mean as a blessing is not what God means as a blessing. For you, a blessing is someone who has a reconditioned car, get a job, have a contract, get married, have children, and then have a village, a village house. And you fly to Kenya, or Arua, Europe one time, then everybody call you blessing. People of God, let's look at Job. Let's look at Job. The Bible clearly said the man was blessed by God and he had 7,000 sheep. This hit me some weeks ago when I was at the farm. And I looked at the sheep. They are not even yet a thousand. But they were many. They had four people taking care of them. Many. I, I, I said, God, what about 7,000? The man had a factory. Shearing wool. Selling meat. When God starts blessing, where's the picture? I don't know, I have to yell to these people because is that what I ask for? I don't know why they always give me people who don't know English. 
and Luganda. Seems there from somewhere. Listen to this. Uliriza. So could you imagine looking at 7,000 sheep? Because you are used to the 7,000 shillings, you think it was 7,000. But when you look at the sheep, 7,000. Put it big here. Why are you putting in a corner? Now, those are not even a thousand. They are not a thousand. But think about standing somewhere and you are looking at 7,000 sheep. 7,000 sheep. And they run before you. <laughs> When we talk about blessing, we don't understand what it means. Our mind cannot comprehend. The man had 3,000 camel. Camel are beasts of burden. So take them to be fusos. Or trailers. The man had 3,000 trailers. If it was this day. Then they talk about the she asses. Those are the ones. No, no, no. Asses are not horses. They're horses. 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 Child of God. 500. Bitano. Those horses which are run these races are winning a million. They cost two million to buy one. That's a Lamborghini. That's a Bugatti. And he had 500. Some of you, you will look at the things and curse him and die. Because you say, how can a man of God be like this? How can this... People of God, you read what Abraham, I mean, uh, this man Job had, and a very great household. Abraham had 318 bodyguards. No, actually, not bodyguards. Special forces. Because he left other people keeping his home. He left other soldiers. He took only 318 to go to deliver his, his, his nephews. Three hundred and eighteen. When we talk about God's blessing, we have no idea. The Bible said that Abraham was very rich in silver, cattle, and gold. In silver, cattle, and gold. We, we have no idea of what God's blessing is. So Moses tries to help us because Moses knew God's ways. Lift up your hand and say, I want to know God's ways. Yeah. You, we need to know God's ways. Psalms 103 verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses. We need to know God's ways. And Moses knew his ways. So that's why he wrote the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Now these people said, Okay, let's take a look at it. These are the laws God But it's wrong interpretation. If you bring it in English, the book of Deuteronomy, you know, if you want to study anything about the body, it's called it anatomy. You know, everything that you are studying, which is the depth, deep revelation, it is, it's a study. It's a deep study about something. Wherever it ends up with all M-Y. This is Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. This is how you study God's way of blessing people. 
The word duet is where duet. we get the word two voices. You either have a quartet or you have a duet. These are two voices. Your voice and God's voice. When you put it together, you have a blessing. You have a blessing. That's why you can't be in a church where people are not talking. People are not praying. People are not saying anything. Jesus said when you pray, say, Our Father which is in heaven, you can't have a pastor praying for you. It's time for you to pray with God. God speaks, you hear. You speak, he hears. That is a duet. A Deuteronomy. And they call it a chamateka. They call it. This is, this is a law farm. You already know. Farm yamateka. No, God is giving you principles. Or He's telling you what he's saying. That's why he said, it shall come to pass. If thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above nations of the earth just to hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. And you do, you do, diligently, you do, child of God, it's not only about hearing, it's about doing. Church, it is time we start doing. It's not only for hearers. It's for us to do. There are do's and don'ts. There are do's and don'ts. God wants you to do something. Because he blesses the work of your doing. Adam brought sin to us because Adam. he did. Sit down. And I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so upset that Adam believed, chose to believe the devil Adam. than believe God. I don't know why people believe the devil is not believing God. Why do you believe? Why Sometimes you believe so strongly. Sometimes you believe what people say. Sometimes you believe this and this. And Why do you choose to believe the devil instead of believing God? God said, I'll bless you. I'll make you great. I'll make your family great. I'll preserve you. I'll keep you. I'll make you great. Why don't you believe that? And you want to believe the devil that there is someone who is bewitching you, who is stopping you. So you have to, to do whatever you want. Because there is a curse on you. Child of God, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Why do you believe Satan? Why do you fear Satan? Why do you fear Satan so much? Me, I'm amazed about this God. Because you see people. Like in the past service, there was a man. Broke his femur, broke his legs, broke everything. He it over there. He started jumping. He has not been able to jump. He has been walking limping. Red from heaven. How do, you, how do you explain that? In just a second. Friday. We saw miracles here. Yesterday, I saw miracles. On Thursday, I saw miracles. What kind of a God? He works in Zomba. He works in, in Ichiboga. He works at miracles. He's going to work in your home. What kind of a God is this? What kind of a God is this? Why don't we believe that God so that he may bring his presence and blessing in our lives? Sit down. Verse 2. Deuteronomy. 
And all these blessings shall In come on you. All you these blessings. Not some. All these blessings. Somebody get ready. Wait, take a all these blessings are going to come on you. Somebody say all these blessings. 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 I can't hear you. Say all these blessings. All, 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 all these blessings. He said, all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. Not only to come on you, but they are going to overtake you. So which means, even if the place where you are going, there is a witch doctor, there is a curse. Even if you are marrying in a family of witch doctor, because the blessing has come on you and gone ahead of you, when you arrive there, there will be no witches, there will be a blessing. I wish I can convince you to drop your mentality and theology about demons and curses and you concentrate on God's blessing because the blessing is better than a curse and it's greater than a curse Let me tell you the truth. Even if you take us from here and you put us in Burundi, we will build a cathedral like this. Because what built the cathedral was not Uganda. Uganda. It was the Holy Spirit. It was God. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. It doesn't matter where you put Either in the Arab world, the result will be the same. When you take me to Chiboga, a people will walk. Zombo, a people will walk. Miracle Center will walk because it's the spirit of the living God. Lift your hand and said, I need a blessing of God. Sit down. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and thou shall be in the field. God doesn't talk about villages. He talks about fields. When, when, when Joseph was removing people, he took them from villages into the city, and he turned the villages into fields. When I was going to, uh, to, 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 to what's, the, what's the place? I, I realize as we flew, you know, it's good to fly because you see what you don't usually see. I saw scattered cows, little cows, scattered, 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 scattered land, scattered, scattered houses, scattered things. Then I reached Masindi. Masindi. I saw parched areas, green, and I thought, hey, these are farms. Then I realized these are sugar cane. I didn't see a wheat field of two square miles. I didn't see maize, one square mile. I didn't see cassava, five square miles. Everything is small. Everything is small. Everything is small. Everything is small. I saw water. Lake Albert. Albert. Edward. Edward. I saw rivers, river Nile, Simanyu Wamala, Navi Sojus, whatever it is. I saw water and I saw dry land. And they said, This is not God. God doesn't do this. He blesses and He adds no sorrow. People don't even have common sense to go to the lake and use a pump and pump water and bring it to their fields. The lake is like so divine. If you touch it, God will strike you with the light. I said, what is this? What is this? Chichichino. 
the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Lift your hands and no more sorrow in my life. I am going to be very rich. If you believe it, clap your hands and praise him. Blessed shall that be the fruit of thy body, oh, the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. God is very consistent. He said, fruit of the spirit, fruit of your body. God does not mix words. He deals with fruit. Therefore, from today, you are going to bear a fruit. Your children, your life. Then he said, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Say it. When we talk about, is there a cabo, a kaliao? Any small basket. Go in that place and see if there is a cabo. Child of God. That's why I say we need to understand. When a Muganda talks about basket, he's not talking about this. Uh -uh. When a Hebrew talks about basket, he's not talking about this. A Muganda thinks about a basket. Muganda basket. Where you put things, you go to Wanjula, and left over food. Those who pick up tea in the fields, they use kind of this. Because they wear it on their head and they pick and throw. And pick and throw. When the Hebrews talk about basket, basket. A person must be in that basket. It must be able to carry a person. That's why Mama Moses put Moses in a basket. basket And it carried him. When Paul and his friend. They wanted to be killed. You see, this, this, is, this is good. This is what a Muganda, this is what, I don't know who else. All of you Africans. These are the baskets. This is what you are thinking about. But the Bible said, when Apostle Paul had to escape, they put him in a basket. Acts chapter 9 verse 25. A basket. Where you can put a grown-up man like me. And nobody will see me when you are roaring me. May God give you a basket your size. Full of money. So when God talks about basket, what does he mean? Is he saying this? Is he saying this? In fact, the word basket in the Hebrew is the same word in English called a bell, a pipa. A widow. A widow. Because she knew God. She had flour. She had flour. In her house. Not in this. Not in boxes. Not in a... Do people have a ngano? A packet of wheat flour. Those packets bring them. Some of those bags. Some of you, hey, when you are going home, or for introduction, you take bags of rice, you take a sack 
And people shout and say, wow. A widow had a barrel of wheat flat. A widow because she knew God. A widow with her son. They knew God. But in a meremba people. They had food in barrels. You're born again. Your food is in those. This is what you buy. And you back at people. Just buy this in your house. And you back at people. Handle them carefully. We are privileged to have something to eat. Some people have nothing to eat. And a widow. A widow. A widow. Had fly in a barrel. May the Lord bless. Your life. May you discover the God of blessings. So when he talks about baskets, and then he says store. Which means every Hebrew, every family had a store for food. Look at the person who said, don't, don't, you, don't you ever bother my time. Don't waste my time. Again. Tell you, Mr. I'm going to spend the rest of my life talking about the God of blessings. This God I believe in. He's telling me I, nonsense. God, are you get a kuma store? God is talking about stores. There is the man who is not a believer. My, my banker told me. He said, Pastor. He said, you don't know how many people you are blessing. You are blessing, blessing so many. Even, even non-believers. I said what? I said nine months ago. A man who is not a believer. Came to the bank. And he borrowed money. He wanted to buy maize. So he hired stores. And he bought maize at 900 shillings. Right now, maize is 2,000. But he bought it at nine. Nine months ago. Now, what am I telling you this? I want your heart. I want you we to be to be I want you to be to slap your heart to die so that you may start believing God. Because issues concerning the spoke and then publicly at Miracle Center. This person bought 5,000 metric tons. That is 5 million kilograms of maize. And the Kenyan company came and bought it all. So by Friday last week, he had made a profit of $1.5 million in nine months. He was watching Channel 44. He heard Pastor talk about maize. He saw prices of maize go up. He said, let me borrow and buy and store. When the scripture said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What are they mean? Somebody who sits and waits upon the Lord. What are you doing? I'm waiting upon the Lord. You mean that's what it means? No. It means you work. You put your hands to something. Then you wait on the Lord to do a miracle for you. It doesn't mean that you sit there and you simply said, okay. What are you doing? I'm waiting. Don't disturb me. I'm waiting. Anytime. Is that where you're now? He's coming. He's coming. God is coming. You drop dead. Because he's not coming. He's coming where there is something done. 
according to his word. That's why they said, let it be done unto me according to your word. Let it be done unto me according to his word. When I do his word, then it shall be done unto me. So when God talks about baskets, what does he say? What does he mean? This one or that one? Child of God, he continued to say, stores, people are building bungalows. No one is building silos. No one is building stores. They are building. You look at Kampala. Have you seen Kampala? Kampala Those store buildings. One, two, three stories. The app is empty. The app has no occupiers. Why? Why? Why didn't he build one, two, three? And then the other ten stories take it to somewhere to build a store. No, no, no. That's not you build a city. Okay. Okay, Sebo. God is talking about baskets and stores. As I was flying, I could count small silos across the agricultural areas. I said, God, have mercy. If this weather stays like this for a year, we'll be like Somalia. Just a year, just six months. Because I could count about 20 sirens from here to Paida. I said something is wrong. Something is wrong. Where are God's people? Where are God's people? We are crying. Government help me. Government do this. Government do that. Government do this. Government do this. Government won't make you. Government You make the government. Wofura government God is looking for one person to build a nation. It's you who build a nation. It is your family to build a nation. Stop, stop gathering the clan members. Some of you are busy. We would have done something. He left India back home. Did Sudir come along with the nation of Pakistan here? Singer. How I wish. Singer. How I wish. No. He's looking for a person to bless you and make you a nation. A nation of believers. A nation of entrepreneurs. A nation of developers. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, there are people here today that God is going to bless so much. He will bless your children. He will bless your work. He will bless your grandchildren. He will bless you in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Why does he has to bless you? Because that's what he wants you to be. He can only use you when you are blessed. Now 
No, no, no. That's what he said to Abraham. He said, we who are not blessed, God can use us. Are you us. crazy? You are blessed, but you don't know about it. Who's bewitching you? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. So that the blessing of Abraham may come to the Gentiles. When you got born again, Abraham came to you. Amen. You people, I'm going to get some of this stick for you. His, Galatian he says, eh? mm. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We have made the curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangeth on the tree. Once Jesus hung on the tree, all your curses, your curses, your sin, he took them and you are left to receive verses so that the blessing of Abraham or no, the blessings of Abraham may come on the Gentiles who don't believe the God of Abraham in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham we receive them through Jesus Christ let the poor say let the poor say let the poor say This is the problem at hand. The people you listen to on TV, on radio, on churches, they are teaching you about curse. If Jesus took the curse, where are the curses you are bringing? How many of you believe there is peace in Uganda? You can do whatever you want to do in Uganda. Wherever you want to do it. You know there is peace in Uganda? Do you know there is peace in Uganda? Somebody will tell you there is no peace in Uganda. You, don't, you hate the truth. When you are the truth, the truth will set you free. Somebody will wake up and say, this is not peace. This is what confuses me. Somebody said there is no peace in Uganda. They wake up in the morning, they start a political party. If there is no peace in Uganda, Uganda, how would you have started a political party? You hate when you know the truth. 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 You know that I become rich. You hate that. You won't believe that. Because it is beating you left, right. It proves you're not a believer. Sit down. Let me give you another stripe. Deuteronomy. 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 My people, which are called by my name, they humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I will, I will heal from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. That scripture is very implicative. It's very revealing. It shows the reason why our country is not healed. Number one, we are not humble. We are not humble. We are not humble. 
that's what the scripture says Jani if my people now, we are the people of God don't raise up your hand if you're not a if my people how many of you are God's people they are going up slowly that means you're not God's people I didn't write Bible that. The Bible speaks. If my people. Sing to man. If my people. Sing to man. If my people. Sing to man. He didn't say 20,000. He didn't say 6,000. Oh, if my what? Singachi. If my what? Singachi. I can't hear you. Sibawulida. If my what? Singachi. Even if it's just miracle center on, on behalf of the 45 million. And in Seba Yafi. This land will be ours. How many of you know God gave you this land? Some of you don't believe it. Some of you don't believe God gave you this land. God gave you nations. You know God gave you this land? God gave you this land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Meaning, what makes a nation sick? Arrogance. Malala. Pride. Not in the world. In God's people, Uganda for God to bless you, God, depending on the 45 million people, depend, Uganda, 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 Uganda. depending on depends on you and me. Oh, okay, Kale. my guy is at the farm called me. My guy, my farm, 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 my Soybean. We planted soybeans. Because we want to produce the, the cow's feed. The hay, it's so hot. What do you say? My God. Who gave me the keys? I can buy it and lose. Now. You drought, I cast I'm commanding rain to come on the farm. That's exactly what I said. That's what I say. Put it here. That's what's happening at the farm. Me, I'm not going to suffer droughts. Because when Uganda Uganda's don't believe God. They believe in global warming. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that God can do miracles. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lose my cows because you don't believe. I know a God who makes a cripple. He can make rain out of the sky. Blue Child of God, the difference between you, a believer, and a non believer, is not in what you say, is in what you do. You don't hear me. It's in what you do. It's in what you do. It's not in what you say. It's in what you do. It's in doing. Don't simply say, I'm saved. I'm also saved. But let's look at what you do. What are you doing? The difference. <laughs> the world is going to say it. I went to Chiboga. I told him, in three days, you're going to have rain. It has started. It and is you. Gwe. God gave you power to bind Okusiba. and to lose. No
instead of using our power to lose miracles, to lose joy, to lose success. No, no, no. no. We are busy doing, I don't even know what we are doing. If my people, which means we are not humble, we are not praying, we are not praying, my people pray. Seek my face, we are not seeking the face of God, we are seeking something else. And turn away from their wicked ways, which means we are wicked. We are twisted in our things. And that's how the enemy is beating us. Listen to this. I need to, I need to hurry. Oh, I've, I've taken too much time. But I need to hurry here. So, these are the blessings. Now, how am I going to enter into this blessing? That's the question. Don't miss next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm sharing with you the secret of possessing your enemy's gates. In other words, the quickest way of occupying your position which the enemy has been holding When God anoints you, He has positioned you. But that does not mean you are now in that position. He has already anointed you, consecrated you, He has nominated you, He has chosen you, but someone is still occupying that place. This coming Sunday, Sunday yeah. you're going to occupy that place quickly. And by the way, whoever is attacking you, whoever is bewitching you, he's just indicating you that Nangi Wanewangi Jango to Alewo. To come take my possession as well, my territory. Now, how do you do that? This is how God decided to bring the blessing. Why is he, in, why is he interested in blessing people? Because he had blessed Adam and Eve with an office to take care of the planets, to take care of everything, to have a good life. But the devil lied to them. And he said, in order for you to keep all that God has given you, you need to be like God. And they fell. So God decided from the very beginning. He said, This is how I'm going to bless man again. So he killed an animal. Remember, Jesus said this. Because we have to look at Jesus and go back and forth. That's how you balance the, the doctrines of the Bible. Jesus is the answer. He's the key. He's the life. He's the son of God. He's the face of God. He's embedded. He's God embedded in him. So I look at Jesus and I go back to the scriptures. God said, this is my body. He took the bread and said, this is my blood. Fantastic. So Genesis how did he, he do it for Adam and Eve he killed an animal so he shed the blood and he took its body the skin and he made them garments that's how he started bringing back man's blessing back and using man again it's through the blood because without the shed of blood, there's no remission of sin. So he had to bring him that way. Noah found grace. What is grace? It's such a For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Okay, Ephesians 2 8. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God. So grace is the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus. 
That's grace means. So Noah, Noah actually was he saw Holy Communion. He saw the blood and he saw the body of Jesus Christ. Even Abraham in 12, chapter 14, Melchizedek came to him and gave him bread and wine. The very elements of Holy Communion and the blood and wine. Genesis 14, 18. So everybody God is going to bless. He uses the blood. He uses the blood. He uses the blood. And the bread. The children of Israel in the wilderness. Do you know why they survived? There was no barren among them. There was no sick among them. There was no feeble among them. The clothes were not breaking. Blood and bread. In the morning he gave them the bread. Called manna. For 40 years. In the evening, it was the quail that was shedding the blood. So he preserved Israel with the bread. Now watch this. What about them in Egypt? How comes he multiplied them? Oh, listen. He preserved them. All the time they were in slavery, the Egyptians were the ones giving them straws, denying them bread. You know the story of, of, um, of Ruth and Boaz? It's a story of gleaning, picking up the leftover. Every time you grow maize, you harvest, there will be some left. Even Rumonde. Even Bijanjaro. So this is what happened. The first miracle Moses did annoyed the Egyptians. And this is what they said. We are not also going to give you straws. Straws is what you cut off after you've, you, you've harvested, is what remain after you have harvested the, 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 the seeds, like, like rice or like uh, flour, wheat flour. But now the Israelis had a chance, watch this, had a chance to go in the field and pick up the leftover wheat to make bread. Remember the first miracle Moses did was to turn the water into blood. So blood was there and now they got the bread. And what happened? In less than nine months they were out of Egypt. Child of God, when God changes your diet, He has changed your destiny. He has totally changed your destiny. David, this man had refused to vacate his position. I'm giving you preview informations for next week. Saul had refused to leave the throne. But then David, David went to Nod and he ate the bread of the priest. Wow. And then Saul came and killed the priests. The following six months, Saul was dead. David was king. Child of God, you're going to learn how to take over positions through Holy Communion. Somebody say, Blood! Bread! Blood! Bread! This is not just religious sacraments. This is the way God chose to transfer wealth from the hands of the wicked to the hands of the righteous. When you take Holy Communion with the power of God, with the fear of God, you will be healed. 
This is what he said to Israel. In the book of Exodus. He will bless our bread. And our water. And he will remove sickness from our midst. Exodus 23, 25. And he shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. And thy water. Which means. Water is the type of spirit. Like wine. Is the type of the blood. And even in wine. Water content is higher than alcohol content. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So water, for everybody who doesn't have this, you can still use water and chapati. He said when you do that, he will remove sickness from your midst. You have a destiny. You are not going to die young. You are not going to live orphans here. God is going to take care of you. Every disease in your family is going to get out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy communion. Holy communion reserved Abraham and I and Sarah. These people were very old. But they had a promise. They had a promise. Do you know what kept them alive? Kept them strong. Sarah delivered at the age of 90. Abraham 100. They have a child. Because the whole world depended on Isaac coming. It was the Holy Communion in chapter 14. Child of God, Holy Communion will preserve your life. Will you heal your life. My daughter was dying. Holy Communion preserved her life. Child of God, I want to declare to each one of you, Jesus was not stupid. Leave alone religious people who think the things of God are a joke. It is a, and I don't know why you are listening to these people. It's just a symbol. These people ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, say. And one of the things he told them to say, give us this day our daily bread. Said, he wasn't really talking about this. He was talking about the Bible. Shut up. Why did he give them the bread? On the last supper. The backslider men of Emmaus. Why did they bring out the bread? Apostle Paul said. I want to tell you the truth. I have hidden nothing of profit to you. Because we move from house to house. In Acts chapter 1 or chapter 2. He said they move from house to house. Breaking bread. Jesus is the bread of life that came from heaven. Many of you have a destiny. Many of you have a destiny. A wise man leaves an inheritance for his children, 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 children. children. God is going to preserve you. Until you have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This disease that comes from nowhere and take you out and cripple you. He actually said, listen to this, he said, even if you drink poison or a snake bites you, it will not hurt you. Why? Because in the morning you took a holy communion. I call a holy communion a meal that heals. A meal that heals. No more ulcers in your life. No more mental sickness in your house. No more poverty. Let me finish with this. Sit down, sit down, sit down. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ said. This is what he said. If you think Holy Communion is just a, a religious thing when you, when you are confirmed in charge, because your tradition have made the word of God of man in 
This is what Jesus said. In John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Valley, valley, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of my son, the son of man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you what life is he talking about the life of ultimate blessings the life of living long in good health with everything you need in life Poverty, lack, sickness, abuse, all kinds of things has created stress which is responsible for 75 of your problems, 75% of your problems. You worry what to eat. You worry where to go. You worry what's going to happen. 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 You no. Neda. Sarah, Sarah was old woman. She's been traveling around the world. Men wanted to steal her. She was tired. She had a problem in her home. A maid wanted to take her husband. Destroy all the heritage. She was tired. She was ready to go. But God gave her a baby by the name of Isaac. And she lived another 37 years. She died at the age of 127. You are not dying tomorrow. Your children will grow. They will graduate. They will get married. They will have babies. You will help raise them. And their babies will raise their babies. And then if you want to go, then you can go. But some of us will be waiting for Jesus. Lift your hand and say, I refuse to die. I refuse to die. Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. Those were her life. She died when Isaac was 37. She built him a tent where he put his bride. She furnished it. Isaac did not have to go and work. Because mama did not die young. We don't know the blessings of God. And people are wasting your time teaching you this demon. Go ahead and bewitch. Go ahead and bewitch. There are several witches, many of them. They even bewitch the eyes. But everybody is shocked. Which kind of witchcraft does Pastor Kayanja do? Because they have bewitched. Whenever they send their witchcraft, did they slice my mango? People wanted to eat some of my mango. Child of God. No matter how much they bewitch. Sheep are increasing, goats are increasing, cows are increasing. We are giving birth to two, two. Where there is no rain, it is cold. You see those ones? Those are better than you. Those children are going to be very rich, those ones.
people of God. Bantu ba katonda. Jesus said, Yesu yagamba. Those who drink my blood and eat my flesh. John 6:56. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. What's wrong with you? People are going to call you a night dancer or wizard. But this is a good wizard, Ray. <laughs> this is good night dance. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. You had not seen believers who walk when God is in God. Yeah, they're also in God. Uh -huh. mm. You're going to see us. You are going to see us. They will see you with God. In and God will be dwelling in you. Listen to God's people, but people to can see you. We are tired of that. People give themselves big titles. Mega apostle. I'm a mega no, apostle. I want to see God. Katonda Mugwe. But no one do we say the beach area. We don't see the family. We mega apostle. We don't want to see a mega apostle. Bagara Kuraba, a man of God. We want to see Omosadja wa Katonda. And a man in God. No Omosadja ali mu Katonda. Big title. Nations are waiting to those who lend them. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I will lend nations. I will never borrow. How will it happen? How will it happen? God must come in you. And you in him. That's why he said, if you eat my flesh, so after they had eaten, Jesus took the bread and he said, this is my body, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. What did he say? Go to Jerusalem. What did he say? We are like Jews. To remember me. Mark the day I died on your calendar and, and do that. Why? Why? He said, Holy Communion. Saints, there's power. It has worked for so many people. I've given you many people today, many examples. People who became great. Because they realize the blood of Jesus or the blood of sacrifice has power. Bread is the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is the word. When you take the blood and the word of God together, you will do exploits. You are about to turn your village into a city. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. You are about to do the impossible. You are about to go to another level. Your children will be mighty on the earth. They are marked with the blood of the Lamb. They are marked with the word of God. You are the head and on the tail. But above all, your life if it's going to be preserved. Your life is going to be preserved. Your life 
is going to be preserved. Sit down. I shall distribute the Holy Communion elements. Don't miss next Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to give you the way of achieving Scripture in John. If you don't eat my flesh, drink my blood, mm, you have no life in you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we This is the meal that heals. Last Friday, we always take Holy Communion on Friday. There was a girl who came. She has been tested positive with HIV. So she came from school. Devastated, dying. She was there. Like, <laughs> they were like, you have gone we to prayed. Church. She took Holy Communion. She went back the following day on Saturday. They checked. The blood was negative. They checked on Monday. It's negative. The girl is negative. Child of God. There is power in Jesus' name. I remember Pastor Rukwago now is a big pastor in Masaka. He and his wife were dying of, 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 of AIDS. In 1988, Mr. Rukwago was the agricultural officer for Mitiana Mubende area. He came when he had all this coma on his body. Sacoma on his body. And he was dying. He came in the room with his wife. And I gave them scriptures to read for 21 days. And I gave them Holy Communion. I told them to take a Holy Communion in the morning. Mr. Lukwago said, but I'm not a reverend. I said, that doesn't say take Holy Communion, you reverend. Are you not a believer? Was Luke and Peter and John, and John were they reverend? I said, you do this in your house. Take it in the morning, lunchtime, and evening. 21 days, everything on his skin disappeared. I had gone abroad. Three months later, I came. Mr. Lukwago had no HIV and his wife. They have lived for over now 35 years. No trace of AIDS in their body. We are not dealing with man. Because this bread. It's just bread. That's a seed. It grows in the field. It's brought out crushed. Turns into flour. Mix it with water. Put it in fire. It becomes bread. Exactly like Jesus came. Came from heaven. Came here buried in the ground. But with the fire of the Holy Spirit. He becomes the bread of life. Thank you Jesus. Yes, Today, your life is going to another level. Have they finished? Have you received the Holy Communion element? If you receive, stand up. If you haven't received, stay seated. We were up there. 
at uh, Kabusu. E Kabusu. Most of the man came looking for his family. He had gotten saved. He was so furious. When he came to the service, he found us giving Holy Communion. In those days, we didn't give these small things. We were giving one akaba or these big ones. And mugs of Rebena or Quencha. You break, you give another one, you break. Other people could take the whole bread. So when he saw breads being passed out, he grabbed one and his mug. So he started breaking and eating. He was dipping in the mug. Out of the service, he came to me and said, I want to see you. See, my family, we are Muslims. Why are these people come here? That I'm going to understand why they are here. Bread. They've been eating bread Okay, here. let my children come. At least you give them bread. And he asked me, are you, are, you, are, you, are you doing the same next Sunday? Now he's born again with his family. All the communion saved him. I don't know why these people give these small pieces of bread. Jesus gave out a piece of because religion thinks this is just a symbol to remember. But Jesus has said, if you eat it and you drink it, I am in you. You are in me. This is not just a symbol. This is a way of God. This is a way to tell the devil, I'm telling you men of you are going to be healed of Alzheimer's. You're going to be healed of cancer. You're going to be healed of poverty. You will come back next Sunday to testify by the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, let this bread be your body. Heal me, save me, transform me, change me, fill me. I'm ready for your will. I'm ready for your power. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. In Jesus' name, no more sickness, no more diseases, no more calamities, no more denial. No more rejection. I believe. I am in Jesus. Jesus is in me. I will not die. I will live. I will glorify God. My life will be set free. I am a child of God. Satan leave. Get out of my body. I remember Jesus is my healer. He is my savior. He is my deliverer. He is my life giver. Hallelujah. I am blessed. You can eat. change your mind from your tradition to his creation you'll be blessed blessings around you they are coming to you they are coming on you they are about to overtake you you'll be blessed in the city and may God give you fear Next Sunday, I'll talk about what a field is. You always hear this English word they said. They are in the field of medicine. They are in the field of agriculture. They are in the field of this. It's not talking about a village. It's talking about something that you're going to be working on. Something you're going to be known of. Jesus said, you will Get your drink. Say, I cherish the blood. I depend on the blood of the Son of God, Jesus, my Savior, my Redeemer. Your blood has power to heal, to save. 
to deliver. I'll never be the same again. My position has changed because of the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am protected. Jesus' blood has put a shield around me. I am the head and on the tail. I am blessed of the Lord. My sins are forgiven. The glory of the Lord is on me. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. My life will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen, amen, you can drink. And after drink, you shout glory seven times. Now claim the miracles. Claim the power. Claim the joy. Claim the healing. Claim the deliverance. Claim the wonders. Claim the salvation. Claim the car. Claim the blessing. Your animals. Your favor. Your blessing. Your next level. Your protection. Come on, go ahead. Claim it upon your children. Upon your children. Lord, I claim it upon Junior. Upon Casting. Upon Christian. Oh God, your children will graduate. They will go to another level. They will have good jobs. They will have good work. You will build stores. You will lend nations. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. God is taking you on a higher level. Your healing is sure. Your anointing is available. The power of God. The Lord is with you. The Lord is for you. No more barrenness. No more cancer. No more blindness. No more death. No more fear. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord will go before you. He will smite your enemies. He will slap the people out of your way. He is releasing the favor. He is releasing the power. Oh, lift up your hands. Start laughing and praising God. In Jesus' mighty name. Healing is yours. May the Lord renew your strength. May He bring healing in your family. May He favor you. May He repair you. May He touch you. May He deliver you. He's your friend. He's your God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lift up your hand and laugh. Laugh and laugh. The Lord is for you. Who can be against you? The Lord is for us. Who can be against you? He will send rain on your farm. He will grow your crops. He will give you the money. He's getting you out of debt. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, El Shaddai. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Amen, amen, Bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you are on us. A holy king, a carpenter, you are the living God, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, a living truth, oh what a friend we have in you, you are the living God. Lift up your hands and tell him, you are my living God. Say, you are my living God. 
You may be seated. Get a hold of a seed. To mark today. God's word is a seed. God uses seeds. To change our lives. And to change our destiny. And by the way, the Lord told me to tell you from tomorrow it's American Independence Day. But as we believe in liberty, in the name of Jesus up to the 16th of September. Start saving money. And open yourself account where there will be over $10,000. God is going to give you money. But you're going to save. You know why? Because there are many things that are going to exchange hands. Things you don't have thought to buy. God is going to give it to you. So start saving. Start saving. At least I declare. Each one of you. You'll have $10,000 on your account. Believe God you shall be established. Believe his prophet you'll prosper. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Waverly. Thank you, Lord. Mukama Waverly. Yeah. Hey. You have witchcraft who has brought it. Alisibia Wongo Aliwa. Everything leaves your home. Life comes in your family. The powers of darkness have no power. God bless you. And give you wisdom and knowledge and increase you in Jesus name take that thing from his head you'll prosper You'll be wise. Are those the men who are always making noise? God bless you, baby. Jesus. I command all the demons on you. I command Lubale. I command Misambwa. I command devils. Get out of that man. Leave him your demons. Cut the talisman. They are living, running away. Behold, they are running away. Leave that man. Never come back again. You evil spirits. Spirits of Lubare. That cripple people. See what witchcraft does to the hands. Your hands will be laid on the sick. Will handle well. See how the devil impoverishes people. That's not how our God is. Our God maketh rich. Our God delivers. Today, demons leave you. I release fire. Burn every rubber. Burn every demon. Burn every misambu. In the name of Jesus. Come out of the bar. Come out of the stone. Come out of the head. Leave. Leave them.
You Satan. You demon. You demon. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Pick them up. What's your name? Mwanga. Mwanga. The other name. Abdu. 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 Atono. Hmm? Oh Goli. Oh Goli. Eh. Ovudewa. Nambebiso. Ovudebu Gisu. Eh. Came from Bukisu. Kali Mudem we began by not I Mukama. Ay where one ye Ndukeza Yesu Oli. Yesu. Yesu Ndukeze Butangisi. Nambota Kumani. Tani bere ayi mbudangu ayi kutani sa. Neza mukono gawele. Yesu anjede. Mbere kajosa nabize. Anya manyo lugisu wano. Anybody who knows that language, lugisu. Yangu wano. You come, hurry up. Abada gambachi. What was did he mean? Okuvalero from Avudembale. He came from Bukisu. That may God lead him. Gamba Yesu. Ay Yesu. Nazano Musaigo. Nagan Yamsaigo. Lero. Gama Cherero. Unco Kiriza. Fujiri Samusino. Undocole. Unco Undocole. Umponye. Uponye. Amina. Amina. A chino nature by the clock on the chicken vehicle. May the bird has been sitting on your head leave you. Now we damo bigamba bino nti ai Yesu ai Yesu mfule kitonde kijja mfule kitonde kijja ondokole ondokole omponye omponye onkutule kama nyiga satan kutule kama nyiga satan de ronzi kiriza de ronzi kiriza oli mulokozi wange oli mulokozi wa amina amina the devil is a liar satan mulimba come on if you are here, you never given your life to Jesus. You are not born again. You've been backslidden. You don't know God. Put up your hand. I want to pray for you. You want to get saved. And come down here. Grab your stuff. And come here. In Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord. Yesu yemukama. Jesus is Lord. Yesu yemukama. Somebody clap your hands with Jesus. Yesu you yesu may mukama. be seated for a moment. Abadana mutuleko kumara kasera. Get hold of your seed in your hand. Kwati nsi gomokono gwo. Let's pray for the souls. Katusabira barokoka. Come on wherever you are. Wona woli. Give them a hand clap. They are coming. Bakubire mungalu babo bajja. You are welcome. Tukwaniriza. Jesus is Lord. Yesu yemukama. Jesus is Lord. Yesu yemukama. He is the same yesterday. Yomujyo. Today. Lero. And forever. He starts a new life for you. And he's going to do great and many things. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every time confess that Jesus Christ 
He's Lord. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my soul. Change me. Transform me. And deliver me. My life is yours, Lord. Cleanse me. Purify me. Heal me. Restore me. I have found you, Lord. You are my God. You are my Savior. I believe I am forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman behind you. He's going to take you for a minute because he wants to find out how we can help you to walk with God. So just go with him. He's behind you there. In Jesus' name. Come on, give them a hand clap. God is good. God is good. Now everybody stand up. On your feet, just get your seed and say, Father, my life is renewed. I am blessed. My seed opens the door for my blessing. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. May God take your life to another level. Go ahead and give your seed. God is awesome. He's mighty. He's powerful. He will change your life. In Jesus' name. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Bring that table, please. Every knee shall bow. Every time confess that Jesus Christ
up on your feet and lift up your hands. God Almighty is powerful. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is powerful. He is a God of miracles. He is a God of signs and wonders. He is ready to touch your life and heal you. Is such a good God. Stretch your hand and say, Lord, I need your blessing. I need your touch. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Jesus. The presence of God is everywhere. God will give you praise. We give you praise. Those of you who came sick. Touch or you feel the pain. We've already taken in the body and the blood of Jesus. The guarantors of our miracles. It's because of the blood of Jesus we are who we are. Because of his body that was whipped that we are healed. There are people here struggling with cancer. I want you to come here. That God will help you. That God will touch your life. That He will do great and mighty things. His presence is real. Change the tone. Why are you playing that kind of music?
Yemu kama, Yemu kama. Yazuki, that change the tone. I don't like it. Get it out. Yazukira mubafu yemu kama boliru limi ruaturenti Yesu yemu kama. Somebody say Jesus is Lord. Kama yemu kama. Yeah, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Bring that lady. Neto muchado. I am the Lord your healer. I give you praise, Jesus. I sent my word and heal your disease. I give you praise, Jesus. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, this one who's down. Easy, that healer thee. Move the stuff. I am the Lord, your healer. Holy Spirit, I give you praise, Jesus. I am the Lord. Stay away. You don't know what you're dealing with. I am the Lord. That healeth thee. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. I give you praise, Jesus. By your stripes. By your stripes. By your stripes. You spit of death. You snake. You lizard. Get out. Get out. You've been biting on all their organs. You've been spreading your cancer. Your poison all over. I defeat you in the name of Jesus. I command you to die at the root by the power that raised Jesus from the dead and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the Lord that healers did. Lift up your hands and say, You are the Lord. A healer. Bring the skull here, that one. Oh, more, you more Heal my disease. I am the Lord. I command the cancer to leave your body. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. In the name of Jesus. That healeth the fire of the Holy Ghost. I am the Lord. Your healer. I rebuke that to leave you. I rebuke that cancer to get out of your system. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out in the name of Jesus. I don't come back again. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Go. 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 Spirit of fear and doubt. Ah. As fear and doubt come against your life. Has fear and doubt come against your life. God healed your mother. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. Your mother will be dead by now. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Somebody shout, trust in the Lord. Has fear and doubt come against your life and your faith is wholly tried. Lift up your eyes. Here comes your help. His name is Jesus for you. He has died. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let
let faith arise in your soul. Rise and be healed. That's it. That's it. Receive it. Receive it. He will touch you. Pick up. And may By faith, we reach out to him. He promised he will heal by God your every need. And he will restore the cry of your heart. He will heal you and make. and be healed touch pick up in the name of Jesus touch Holy Ghost I give you praise let faith arise in your soul rise and be healed where is your cancer hmm? my skin it is, it, is, it is your skin. Do your hands like this. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. You don't have cancer. That's what the Lord told me. That's why I ask you, where is your cancer? Because I couldn't see it. But I pray that God will heal your skin. Anybody with cancer, come here quickly. He will touch you. Touch your head. Touch. I rebuke this sickness and disease to leave you. Cancer, get out and die at the root. Get up. Get up. Get up. This man came with who? I didn't call people to be prayerful. I'm praying for people with cancer. So I'm, I'm, I'm so be careful, please. I see a stick. You hear me? I see a stick. I see a stick. This tall. Taller than him. It's a stick. Mugo. Taller than him. What is it? Kuliwa. Ndaba omugo. Muamvu. 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 Gumusi Wa kala ngeya. Ngeri ene laita kaleri. Let the committee judge you. you. No, no, no. The other one. Yeah, color weight. No, no, no. This one. Walu wakati wali akali kemba denja gala. Ah, ah. Yeah. The color is like this. Gufana na buwekutu. Nga muamvu. It's tall. Guli rudawa. Where is that stick? Mugo, 
Mm. How long have you been with it? Okay. How has it been helping him? Who gave it to him? Hmm? The son gave it to him. The son or daughter. How old is that child? 20 years old. Why did they give it to him? Because he's a herdsman. What does the son do? He's also a herdsman. I see a cupboard that size in your house. Yes. Yeah. It is there. Because the spirit of the Lord is already there in the room. Where you are the where the That's where the cupboard is. Cupboard. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God. In Jesus name. Stand up, lady. You may be seated. What do you feel, mama? The old body is shaking. Has it been the case before? All night she had a partner. She has a cancer of the breast. He said they're going to cut it off. That's why she decided to come here for prayer. She comes believing God to be healed every day. She had got a very big tumor that's been hurting. She cries all night and all day. She blesses God who has healed her. As dreams of the dead. Today she dreamed about a dead person chasing her. With a machete, a person wanted to cut her. There is no one who helped her. Touch where the tumor was. In the name of Jesus. That Holy Spirit, I give you praise, Jesus. What is your name, lady? Nyabo Erinya Yokwani. Evelyn. Okay, Evelyn. 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 I want you to walk there and come back. Come what a healing Jesus. I know what a healing Jesus. 
I found in you. Okay, touch your armpit where the tumor was. Such a time as this, oh, rise on healing. Son of righteousness. Something was in your breast. What way you have you buried you? Yes. But praise the Lord. No man, no man, she even left the husband sick. Something attacked him. She's, she's a king and who is married to Uganda. She had no solution but left the husband at home. You could not raise your hand. Yes. She could not do that. She would walk like that. Which breast had the uh, had the, uh, the, the cancer? Which Be, breast? Bere chini ba demoko kolo. That one. Something was in there. Mo ba demu chini mo? Yes. Ba demu samba. Ba demu. Where is it now? Chiri wakati chini ba demu. Kigenze. It's gone. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. What a healing Jesus I found in you. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. What a healing Jesus. Lord, touch her husband. Touch her husband. Lord, touch her body. The power of God is here. People, lift up your hand. Say, in the name of Jesus, every disease, every infirmity, every poverty, get out of my house. In the name of Jesus, oh, the power of Almighty God is on you. Raise your hand and receive from God. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord add blessings in your house. Bring healing in your house. Bring deliverance in your house. Bring signs and wonders in your house. May he bless your children. May he bless your husband, your wife, your children. In the name of Jesus, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Rise on healing. 
Everybody just touch where the pain is. Touch where the sickness is. And believe God for your miracle. Believe God for your miracle. No sickle cells. No bandage. No lack. No frustration. No rejection. Your case is bad. They want to fire you. Your termination has arrived. In the name of Jesus. We reverse it. We reverse it today. In the name of Jesus. We declare blessings. We declare miracles. We declare healing. We declare deliverance. In Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. Who told you to take our way? Praise Jesus. No cancer is coming back in your body. No disease is coming in your body. No lack. No poverty. I cancel out your debts in the mighty name of Jesus. May God supply all your needs. May the wisdom of God increase upon your heart. Saints, in the next seven days, you are going to see the mighty hand of God in your life, providing for you, giving you land, giving you money, giving you opportunities, giving you blessings, giving you air tickets. The Lord is going to favor you. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Clap your hands. Wave your hands and shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 The blood of Jesus and the word of Jesus is upon your life. No cancer. No tuberculosis. No pain. No diseases. No death. Life is in you. Life is in you. Life is in you. Blessings are coming. Increase is coming. Anointing is coming. The favor of God. The power of God. You will possess nations. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. There was a bread. And that 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 that, that drink. Whatever it was in the jar. Hurry up. Get me an empty bottle. For the chupa in Two of them power in that one and the other one. Give another bag like this. Get me another bread if there's oh, another bread. Oh, Lady, come here. You go and have Holy Communion. Gendo, Holy Communion. With your husband. No wo. Every disease will never come e, to your house and your children. Kuda nyumba yo. Lady, have. Go in your house and have Holy Communion. There will be no disease in your house again. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Lift your hands and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the Spirit say that this coming Sunday.
Tunaendelea Oh we are coming as family to give thanks for what God has done Tujianga family kweba za katonda byakoze We are coming with our families Tujiane family za fe We are going to bring our thanksgiving offering Tunaenda lete bwa byokweba We are going to give testimony Tunaenda kuwa mjulizi Just say yes the Lord Tuwa yogena mukamba Because the heaven is open Ubeguru ya good day For you Jori For you Jori For me Jendi For us Jetuli In the name of Jesus Yesu Bring those babies in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I dedicate these babies. May the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob crown their lives. They will never be an orphan. Oh, they will never be beggars. In the name of Jesus, I dedicate your babies in the Holy Spirit that the Lord will do marvelous things. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' May the Lord do wonderful stuff. Oh, I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you to God in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Don't stop, just keep on walking. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Hey, how are you, buddy? Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you. 
in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen and Amen. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Lift your hand. Say, so today is my beginning of my blessings. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Oh, don't miss Wednesday, don't miss Friday. Six o'clock prayer meeting. Every day we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord will do wonderful things and He will do wonderful stuff. He will bless you mightily. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Dedicate you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Ah, she has gone to Daddy. Thank you. God bless you. Wonderful kids. Blessed kids. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Say, I'm blessed. Hey, don't miss Wednesday. Don't miss Sunday. Sunday, we are continuing with the teaching on the blessings of God. By the end of this year, you and your children, you will be a wonder in the family. You will be a wonder in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God, we'll see you. God bless.